What is up, people? You are listening in to New Generation Hero Talk. I am your host, EJ Stewart. We got a lot to talk about on today's show. We will be talking about a lot of the drama happening with uh, the fallout from Bodemeyer's exit from X Men '97. Bodemeyer was the showrunner, executive producer of that show. He was unceremoniously fired prior to the show coming out. He's been very vocal on social media. He's not shied away from. He's not. There's not somebody who's gone into the shadows and tried to hide from whatever with the reason he was fired. He's been out in the open. He's been talking a lot about the show, talking a lot about his time at Marvel. Sounds like Marvel's had enough of Bo DeMeo, and they decided to uh, finally release a statement about what exactly went down and some of the reporting we are hearing about uh, what happened. The allegations against the Bo DeMeo are not good. So. We'll talk about that on this show. We'll also talk about D23 that happened last weekend. Um, Marvel, once again, following Comic-Con weekend, had some more first looks and new looks at several projects, including uh, Captain America Brave New World, including um, uh, Thunderbolts. Those are movies. And, of course, you had TV shows as well that were featured. Uh, we had uh, X-Men 97 was featured, actually, uh, in the animation side, uh, Spider-Man. A friendly neighborhood uh, Spider Man was a uh, feature. We also got some Daredevil stuff, so an uh, Ironheart stuff. So we'll talk plenty about that um, on this show. So excited to talk about this show. Joining me are my co hosts, starting with Shamari Stewart. Sham, before we started this show, I did not remember that there was a, can- uh, a-, a Craven the Hunter trailer <laughs> that came out from Sony. Craven the Hunter is a movie. That will be coming out as a standalone movie from the MCU, of course. This is just the next iteration from the Sony uh, Spider-Man movies. We've had Venom movies. We've had a Morbius movie. We've had a Madam Web movie. And now uh, Craven, the latest one, uh, is coming out in December. And they just released the trailer. So I did not remember the trailer happened. I just watched it just now. I have a lot of questions, but I want to know quickly, what were your thoughts on this Craven trailer? Um, I thought it was okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought it was okay. I, it's I have a lot of questions too. Wondering, um, you know, is Craven? I guess he's they're trying to make him like a hero or anti-hero or something along those lines. So I'm wondering what what he's supposed to be in this like universe because um, he's definitely seems to be is being portrayed as like a protagonist in this uh, movie. So. <laughs> You know, I so, so that's why I'm just like I don't, I don't know. I, I you know I don't know uh, what is, what their aim is uh, for this. Uh, the action looks fine. It looks like they're gonna give him like a hallway scene, which I mean, I mean, I guess everyone loves a good hallway scene, so that'll be interesting to see. But but uh, yeah, no, I don't know. I I don't really know uh, how like good or or not this movie is gonna be. So I'm probably gonna see it anyway. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's interesting. But I, I definitely agree. It definitely uh, leaves a lot of questions. Uh, que- Kendall, of course, joins us on the show as well. Uh, Kendall Shamari sound equally as confused as I am about what I had just watched when it came to the Craven trailer. What were your thoughts on the trailer for the movie Craven the Hunter? To me, I think that this as an idea is not terrible. Uh, I think Craven is a character that can be molded into a character that can be the lead of his movie i don't think that that's his best role i think we all agree uh i think we'd all much rather see a craven uh be the villain of a spider-man movie but uh this is what we this is the cards we've been dealt i think aaron taylor johnson is miscast as craven the hunter uh but i think that they are but they're casting but this is a different craven like this is the same deal as tom hardy playing venom like, if you want, if you want like a leading man, Craven, then I guess Aaron Taylor Johnson can do it. But like, would I ever buy that that would be the Craven that's going up against Spider Man? Like, I, I just wouldn't buy it. You know, like if you told me Carl Urban was playing Craven the Hunter, I'd be like, yeah, that's that's Craven. You know, mm-hmm. like I think that there's actors that would have been better fit fits for Craven. In a traditional Craven, you know, story, uh, this is what it is, and it's cannot. It doesn't guarantee that it's going to be terrible, but it's just, 
You know, I just I just think there's a limited upside when you're telling me this is going to be generic Hollywood guy, uh, you know, generic, um, you know, guy gets powers, you know, and now he's like, again, I guess he's like, say, the protagonist, I guess. And, you know, they apparently it seems like they're trying to shoe him, shoehorn in uh, this rhino thing. You know, the rumor was like. The rumor was that there was there were a lot of reshoots that happened recently, and that Rhino seemingly was supposed to be like maybe like the end of the movie with the guy turning into Rhino, like you see his arms kind of transforming. That was supposed to be like the end of the movie, teasing like a sequel. And mm. it's like they've learned from you know every other terrible superhero movie, like don't tease something that may be cool off a terrible movie. Just put it in the movie because <laughs> you're not going to get a sequel. Yeah. Um, and so they're giving us Rhino now, apparently. And the Rhino has been a little controversial. I, I mean, look, it's way better than the Paul Giamatti Rhino in Amazing Spider-Man Two, uh, where he's like in a mech suit. Mech suit. Uh, but that's a that's a low low bar. Uh, it's <laughs> it's okay. I don't think it's passable if this was an MCU Rhino. But again, this is the, this is the cards we've been dealt. So I mean, I'll probably see it. I'm more way more likely to see this than I was Morbius, than I was Madam mm-hmm. Web. Uh, to me, this is like closer to Venom than it is to those movies. It's probably closer to Morbius, but, like, I'm just not... I just don't care about Morbius as a character, so I'm not... Definitely wasn't going to see that. Craven, at least... I do care about Craven as a character, so I may... I'll probably see... Them. Wait, so you never saw Morbius? No, no. No shout out. So, wait, Morbius. both of you, both you guys never saw Morbius. Oh, wait, no, no, I saw you, Morbius. EJ, you saw it with me. Yeah, we yeah, saw it together. Yeah, I, I unfortunately saw Morbius. Yeah, um, no, yeah. I, yeah I we're like a mishmash, right? No, we're because, like mixed on that. You guys, you guys haven't seen Venom two, right? No, no. I saw Venom two. Oh no, I saw Venom two. Shamari didn't see Venom two. I didn't see Venom two. I didn't I saw see. I didn't see Madam Web. I yeah, I, I'm the only one that saw Madam Web. Apparently. Yeah, and you didn't see Madam Web, but you also didn't yeah. see Morbius. So yeah, we're all a mixed bag when it comes <laughs> to this the Sony uh, Marvel movies. And kind of, we mentioned, you know, they that you know this movie appeared to learn from bad Marvel movies. I thought you meant. Talking about their own movies. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Because to be them honest, are I mean, movies. yeah, I mean, because to be honest, uh, finding the good Sony movie that they made that's not a Spider Man movie is hard. I mean, I could maybe squint and tell you that like Venom was popular and therefore you have to say it's a decent movie, but like, and Shamari's already shaking his head. I could see nah, that. I could, yeah, nah, I could feel nah, the disdain nah, from my from my computer nah, screen movie. even trying to like, say so that Venom one was decent. I'm not even looking to see. <laughs> like so, and now I actually think Venom two is actually better. If that was me. Um, the the one thing about this movie, look, uh, the action seems like it might be cool. Um, there are certain like obvious turns of like the look they try to give Aaron Taylor Johnson, like you know the fur. <laughs> the bare chest like there's certain like shots in there that you see and you're like oh, those are cool shots like who you know this this is craven in live action not something we've ever seen before but it just all feels forced it feels wasted to me like um i don't really see much of a plot other than like cool looking guy can kill people like i mean i can like look like that that has worked for other franchises like it works for john wick it works for name many other you know killer assassin movies now this one is leaning more on the like uh safari hunter type of that character and maybe that's what they're gonna lean in like i don't it's not to say that this movie doesn't have a lane uh i just feel like nothing i saw from this movie like screams this is for me which i feel like is a bad thing considering like i i mean i'm a superhero nerd as much as they come and i feel like and we all love kinda, Craven the Hunter's character. Right, we all love Craven the Hunter. So, like, it feels <laughs> like this is something I should be interested in. But I don't, I, I just, this, this trailer just didn't do much for me other than, like, I know Craven can kill people in multitudes of ways. I guess I just needed something story driven. And I, it's Craven. I'm not asking for this to be, you know, uh, gone with the wind. But I, I feel like I just needed some kind of story. I couldn't get any kind of story from the trailer I just watched. Yep. I just feel like it was just Craven running around, killing folks, something about his dad also being a killer, and maybe he wants to be as bad, and maybe he doesn't. I don't know. I I, I think Chameleon's it, in there uh, talking about, like, oh, you're just like your dad, you know, because, of course, they're brothers. 
Um, I don't know. I just, I just, this, this didn't move the needle for me, and it just leads to a larger question of just about like, you know, what is the purpose of of this Sony universe? Like, where is this going? Because I know their whole purpose is to try to maximize the Spider Man IP as much as they can now that they split the revenue with with Disney. So okay, you do this separate universe where you use all the characters that Marvel's not using. Um, that are Spider-Man characters, but people have to want to see these movies. Like, it, like just to me, like it feels like these movies are just burning money. Like Venom, we take out of that because Venom does pretty well at the box office. But these other franchises, you know, we didn't. Man Web not do well. Morbius did not do well. I don't anticipate this movie will do that well. But we have a long way to go, and um, it's too early, I think, from a marketing campaign standpoint, for me to determine like, oh, this movie is dead on arrival. And I actually think what happened with Wolverine and Deadpool should help this movie because any aspect of like superhero fatigue or questions of a radar superhero movie, like, you know, people who may be considering that will say, well, I like the Wolverine and Deadpool, so maybe I'll check this out. This movie could not be more different when it comes to tone. <laughs> this movie seems to take right. itself very seriously, unlike Wolverine and Deadpool. But I, I think that that's going to be the, the issue is... How does this movie find a way to differentiate itself from the other Sony movies I, in a way that makes people want to go see it? And if they don't have the kind of box office numbers, I think that would garner more Carrie the Hunter movies. Like Sony's got to ask real question: like, is this like, is this continuing viable. to be worth it to keep doing these solo movies? And that concerns me because I think, I'll be honest, I think that these movies have to do well. Like, I think it's in all of our best interests that these Sony movies do well because I think that allows Sony to feel secure about his relationship with Marvel and the Spider-Man stuff. As soon as they become insecure about their ability to make movies that can make money on their own, the more they could be inclined to say, hey, you know what, let's pull back those movie rights that we've given to, to Disney. We can't keep doing this because we're not able to make money off Spider-Man without Spider-Man. That's a Z. real thing that would concern me. And that's why this doing these type of movies that just don't bring anything uh, to the table, don't bring any interest for me, That that is extremely concerning. To me, I would look. I would look to the model that they should be trying to emulate, and it's not easy. I'm not saying that this is going to be easy, but the model that they should be trying to emulate is Joker. You know, like Joker for whatever reason was a movie that just was made and seemingly and seemed far more serious than anything Sony has come out with. That's that's not that's in this Spider Verse thing. You know, like uh, and live action at least, and so they've created this 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 universe where we've got Morbius and Venom and Craven and Madam Web and none of them have looked anything like Joker. See, and, and Kendall, I, and Kendall, this is where I would push back and say you gotta watch Morbius. Morbius they tried Morbius Kendall, they tried to take the joint seriously. There were times where it was like, Morbius was <laughs> it was very creepy where I'm like, man, they're really going for this like horror like which right. again I didn't hate more EJ hated Morbius. I didn't hate Morbius I thought at times it 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 was I was like oh okay they're really trying with this Morbius thing but right it but it just didn't stick the landing and, and and I I think Venom one like tried to be a Venom movie and like it kind of didn't really work but like the humor kind of worked and it looked cool enough that it was able to sell and so then they made a Venom two where they were like. We're not going to try and make this event a movie. We're carnages in it, but it's going to be a, a comedy, and it's going to be funny. And that didn't really work. <laughs> but you know, it, but like you know, it, the humor was still there. It was still good, but like it's not a Venom movie at that point. But you know, they've kind of lost themselves a little bit. I know that they have this now. This thing where Lord and Miller are going to be producing television series, and yeah, we'll see what the Spider Man Noir show with Nicolas Cage looks like. Um, I don't believe, apparently he's not allowed to play Peter Parker, uh, which is interesting because that, you know, I guess in the in Spider-Verse, he's, Spider-Man Noir is just another version of Peter Parker, but right. there's some legal thing where they don't own the rights to the TV rights to Peter Parker. So he has to be Ben Riley as Spider-Man Noir, which is a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, it's supposed to be kind of like the same character he plays in, in Spider-Verse, but, but I think that'll be almost like the real test of like, what is something like that's serious and grounded in this Sony Spider-Verse look like. And it's a television series or it's a streaming series, whatever it's going to be. 
Uh, it's not a movie, but I think that that could be interesting. When when uh, when I saw this trailer, it kind of made me think this is something that would have done better in like and like EJ, you know what I'm talking about in like the '90s, 2000s, when like the Mummy and some of those other like kind of safari type Tarzan mm-hmm. or you know yeah. George of the Jungle and those some of those types of like safari kind of like adventure movies were coming out. Yeah, I feel like this probably would have fit that mold much better and probably would have got a lot more people to want to see it. Yeah, I just yeah, I watched this trailer and I'm just like who is this for? Like I don't I don't think that like, you know, Aaron Taylor Johnson is a very handsome guy. I think the violence in this movie won't really attract women. I like it's a superhero movie, but I don't know, they just something about it just doesn't also even feel superhero y to me. It feels more like it's like Indiana Jones meets John Wick, which right. sounds cool, but like I like I know like the listener who's listening to this podcast, like I know that sounds cool. I promise it's not. It, well, it was not well, look it, as cool as what I just described. Well, yeah, it's Indiana Jones meets John Wick meets Morbius. Like at the end of the day, like, right, right. But like, like it's the got Mor- the feel of Mor- Morbius. Yeah, no, that's fair because you got like the this, premise like, is Indiana Jones John. Yeah, Wick, but, the, but like the this torture, but this tortured soul who like. It almost seems like he doesn't want to be this person, which takes all the fun out of it. I think that's a great. I think that's a great, great example. Um, because I, I agree. Like the, you know, Craven. This Craven has a reluctance to, to to leaning into this animalistic side to him. So therefore, the fun of him just like murking people left and right and animals left and right, you take away from it a little bit. Whereas like John Wick and like Indiana Jones is just fun from the beginning. So I think that I think adding the Morbius twist to I think was perfect, and I think it's why it doesn't work. Um, maybe if he was more inclined to being like, yeah, like this is who I am. And it's funny because the trailer started that way when like he's in the cell and like he kills one guy and he's about to kill the guard to let him know that hey, like you know the rumors are true, I'm him. Like I actually kind of liked the beginning of this trailer, and I was kind of excited to see where this was gonna go, and it got less and less fun as they moved on. Um, and then the Rhino you already talked about. I mean, yeah, way to go to have another would be Spider-Man character that we could have seen in a Tom Holland movie be wasted as a throwaway. Rhino's got to be bigger. Craven the Hunter movie. Why he's randomly in the forest or the jungle? I, I'm trying to figure that out. The desert. Yeah, is he a New Yorker? Yeah. Like, what is like? <laughs> yeah. Like, what's he doing there? Like, how did he get? How did he get there? Um, he's running with other rhinos. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna hate that scene. I can see that today. I can see how much I'm gonna hate that scene. So. Uh, not all that impressed with this trailer. I, I will say, I think the action looks good. Like, that's the one thing I can say. Like, I don't think anybody can lie and say, oh, this action looks corny. Like, uh, the action, he looked, he was moving well. The violence is certainly there. So there's that aspect that maybe could save it. But I, I think that it's going to take a lot, I think, to, to really make me interested in this film. So, uh, but I wanted to make sure we got it in there because that did come out this week. I want to talk though, about a lot of these details regarding the, the Bo DeMeo uh, firing. So it, this all really popped off late this week, uh, heading into the weekend uh, with, you know, this back and forth between uh, Bo DeMeo and uh, Marvel slash Disney, which actually really was not a back and forth. It was really only Bo DeMeo who was continuing to talk, continuing to uh, suggest innuendo, no pun intended, about like his firing being unfair, or the fact that you know he was not being uh, embraced for the work that he had done, or credited correctly for the work that he had done. Uh, the word was that he was not going to be allowed to go to the Emmys, uh, where he, you know, he's a candidate for his work on um, on uh, X Men ninety seven. He also was not going to be uh, credited in, any longer for. Uh, the X Men ninety seven season two work that he did. Now he posted uh, on social media that he believed it was a a pride post that he pasted on Instagram, which was a drawing of himself um, in like X Men like like a Wolverine Cyclops like Cyclops co- yeah. costume, yeah, the Cyclops costume um, that he believed that you know Marvel had said this was a breach in his contract for for you know continuing to promote and talk about X-Men 97, so therefore they were not going to give him the credit. 
And that really seems to be the tipping point for us to finally got an answer to what happened with this. Because it's been the question we've asked pretty much since the news came out. I mean, I want to bring you guys back. Remember, the announcement of his departure was essentially like a week before the premiere. Like, like all systems were go and like we didn't know if there were any problems. We didn't know if the show was any good. Like we were just waiting. We like we all were like, all right, it's coming out next week. Let's see what happens. And then you heard the showrunner get fired. You're like, oh man, Marvel. It seems to suggest another instance of Marvel being in a complete tailspin. That's what that's what we were. It's crazy. They're like it's not crazy just because of like it was so recent. But considering X Men ninety seven and De- Wolverine and Deadpool and how much the narrative is starting to shift is sometimes it's kind of crazy to go back to just how bad the narrative was for Marvel at that time. Like when that happened, it was like Marvel is lost. Like they did this thing that everybody was looking forward to and excited about, and they can't even get the showrunner to the premiere. Like what the hell is going on over there? So that was how he was let go. And then there was this cloud of not knowing what happened. They didn't say really anything. They didn't give us any clue about what led to his firing other than he was fired and, you know, led people to try to speculate, but we didn't know. Then the show comes out. The show is hot as fist grease. And everybody's like, wait a minute. Why did you fire, homie? What, what, like, why would you fire a guy? And meanwhile, while this is all happening, he's tweeting. While the show's going, he is tweeting tweeting. about the show. He's tweeting about the show like like he's still on the show. He's giving us updates. He's giving us, hey, this is what I was thinking in episode two. Oh, this is what we're this is what we're thinking about for season two. So he's tweeting like he's still on the show, which is leading to even more confusion. But they're like, well, he's acting like he's a part of the show still, which I guess is it within his right. Like he is technically the creator. So like, but like still, like he was fired. So like, why would someone who was fired be actively promoting a show they're no longer on? It led to people to think, well, maybe it was like some BS. And maybe he was railroaded, and maybe there's a chance that Marvel could like realize the error of their ways and bring him back. Um, I think I appreciate this show. I think we all were all very responsible in terms of like just saying, "Hey, like we don't know what happened. We hope we learn what happened, but until we know what happened, we kind of just got to live with the results of what's happening and just wish everybody the best." Well, now we know at least Marvel's side of why he was gone, and it doesn't paint Bo in a very good light at all paints him in a borderline criminal light. So they come out with a statement. They go to all the trades because the word was like, all right, Marvel's had enough after he talked about that this was some uh, con- that, that Marvel was basically railroading him by claiming he was breaching his contract. And they put out a statement basically detailing what they thought were, well, they didn't detail him, but they said that uh, Bodeme was let go for what they called, quote, uh, egregious misconduct was the word. That was used. That was used after an internal investigation that dated back to March. That led to Bo DeMeo coming out. And everybody's like, "Oh God, you know, what does that mean?" Then Bo DeMeo comes out. And he's like, "Oh, this is Marvel and them doing their games, their 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 their, uh, their intimidation tactics to try to silence people and stuff." And I'm like, "Okay, Bo DeMeo still not backing down. So what's going to happen?" So then, shout out to Jeff Snyder. He's you know he's one of the one of the best in the game when it comes to finding out information about this stuff. And, man, when he put out that tweet, I don't know if you guys saw, he put out a tweet. He must have put out this tweet at, like, midnight or whatever, 1 a.m. I mean, he's in the West Coast. Maybe it's different. But he was like, I'm, I, like I have the information on what, what the allegations are against Bodomeo. I'm giving both sides 12 hours to respond. Right. <laughs> I'm like, this sounds like the Drake Kendrick beef. This was like, you know, oh, Drake's got six hours to respond to this Kendrick track. Kendrick's got, he's, Kendrick's on the clock. I'm like, yo, man, he's saying that Marvel and, and Bill DeMeo on the clock. What the hell's going on? So this morning was crazy. The report eventually comes out, and the details are really bad. Um, so there's allegations of Bill DeMeo apparently sending um, suggestive, explicit, and nude photographs to uh, staff members, young male staff members on the show uh, that he said were quote, supposed to be quote unquote uh, inspiration for their work uh, as they're working on the um, show X Men 97. He was apparently told to stop. He did not stop and he continued to send these photos allegedly. Uh, there was also apparently emotional and physical abuse of staffers. Uh, 
that is not as detailed in terms of what that entailed. So I want to be fair to the entire story. In terms um, of like also, what the, EJ, there was like, me, sorry, what heck, can uh, share? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the photos were these were also unsolicited. Like, yeah, this unsolicited. Was not, this yeah, was not. it's all been it's been described so far as unsolicited. There's no instance yet that I've heard or even anything from both sides saying that this was consensual work. Um, that was being sent. These pictures I was being sent. Um, and yeah, there was a uh, physical. I think there was a groping allegation in terms of the physical abuse. That was maybe the one thing I think I did see. Uh, there was one instance of groping, but, uh, but yes, groping of an assistant, yes. And but besides, other than that, there wasn't the other physical abuse. I did not see anything. That was in the Jeff Snyder story. Oh, so a lot happened. And then, um, and, sorry, go ahead, Kendall. Is, is yeah, I'm just want to just add that. Um, and then he lawyered up. Yes. And he, he hired this guy, Brian Friedman, who apparently is a, you know, sort of Hollywood super lawyer that reps, has repped quite a few, I believe, I want to say maybe Johnny Depp, I heard, but mm-hmm. repped Sage Steel when she left ESPN. Yes. Uh, so she's, you know, he's dealt with anti-Disney cases and they, he basically came out and said, yeah, hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm locked up with my client. We've got a story to tell. And, you know, he basically attacked the idea that, you know, Disney has this practice where they, you know, put people on NDAs and they can't ever comment on anything ever again. Um, which again doesn't address the allegations at all, but right. uh, seems to focus on the idea of the Ken Bo DeMeo. Should he have been tweeting about X Men ninety seven? Which, which, which I think we we all agree asked. is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all <laughs> we. I think we all agree is not. Not the not the headline of this no. story. You should both have been tweeting about X Men ninety seven. I don't nope. think Marvel cares, but they're trying to. Def- it's seemingly, I think they're trying to deflect uh, into turn this into a conversation of Disney's NDA policy as opposed to whatever the, whatever the heck happened uh, while the show was being produced uh, last year. Yeah, and I'll say this. I mean, if these allegations are true. The level of narcissism and sociopathic behavior we've seen from Bo DeMeo over the last four or five months is a little disturbing and would I would suggest maybe he needs to seek some help because it's just a no brainer to fire somebody if that is true. If, if you and, and I want to be clear, I tried to read a lot on this. I try to get all sides of this. Now there, I've seen some people say, well is not the most uncommon thing for artists to work off of like nude art, like to, to to work with people, you know, that, that apparently that, and I'm not an artist, but I think even I, I think I think even me being a lamest, I think I've seen, of course, artists drawing, you know, drawing nude artists or being, or having a new, new model and drawing whatever. So some people said, well, if you send it to artists, maybe it's different. Uh, none of these articles or nothing from Snyder suggests that they were artists. They just said staffers. And then there's also an aspect of, well, he is their boss. He's right. sending pictures of himself. It's different than sending like a random nude model. Even I that think, would maybe be a little weird, yeah. but like right. sending yourself. I, I, and and to, to, you know, Bo is, uh, he's very, um, I guess the word I would use is like body conscious, a bit body image conscious. Like he's, He's ripped, like you know, he's buff, like he's strong. Uh, he does a lot of posing, shirtless, and you know, flexing muscles. I think at one point he did have an OnlyFans. I think I saw. Um, so like, he is not like not that it matters, but like he is someone that is very comfortable in his skin, very clearly, and like um, a non-explicit OnlyFans, at least from what I right. Heard. I've heard it's not explicit. Yes, thank you. That's an important detail as well. But to be sending when you're an employer or you're at least in a position of power to be sending pictures of yourself naked or almost naked in suggestive uh, stances. I, they say call them suggestive hero stances, I think was the article. It's just unacceptable. And, you know, there was a detail, but, you know, Bo is, is, is openly gay and, you know, the person said that he was only sending these pictures to young male staffers. Uh, no female staffers got these pictures. That's another Jeff, Katie Jeff thing. Snyder. It, it, and Jeff Snyder is, is is messed up, but he put in his article. He said, "If if you were a 
male staffer under thirty that worked on X Men ninety seven. You you have you have these pictures. You have these pictures. Whether you wanted them or not is what you said. Yeah. Uh, which just right. to illustrate what you know, seemingly allegedly, what the the gravity of the situation was. And we don't know how big the staff was for X Men ninety seven. Um, but even if it's, I'm assuming two, even if it's two or three people, it's not enough. It's <laughs> yeah, it's too already much. too many. It's already um, too many. Even talking about two people is too many. Like, so it's it's so it, it, this looks bad. I mean, everybody has a right to their side of the story. I'm sure Bo has a side to the story. For me, being just how I now having a bigger picture of at least what Marvel was detailing and and what they saw, I I, I don't want to hear any more about Bo DeMeo and like. His future at Marvel, his future with the X Men, like me, is fried. Uh, unless he can, they can show me otherwise that he did not do this. Because that's the thing. It's like that's why I say that I feel like this looks like sociopathic behavior, and it's concerning to me, just for his own personal health and mental health. Because a, a text, it, 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 like, uh, like you can't, like, it's either he did it or he didn't. There is no gray area. If there are people working on the X-Men show that have screenshots in their phone of Bo DeMeo in uh, inappropriate pictures that he's sending to them without any kind of, uh, you know, consent and then was told to stop and he kept doing it, there's just, it's, it's, it's open shut case. There is no, I don't care about he, should he be tweeting, should he not be tweeting um, should he be allowed the Emmys? Should he not be allowed the Emmys? None of that stuff really matters. I mean, if, if you want, if, if you want to try to argue me, say he needs to go to the Emmys, I, I don't care. Sometimes I don't. I, he can go to this. I don't care. But to me, we, we've talked a lot about like his future and whether or not Marvel showed poor judgment or if there was some kind of weird like smear campaign going on against him. I feel like Marvel tried to protect him because this has been. How many months have gone on where we didn't know anything? And it almost felt yeah. like Bo DeMeo was, like, in a way, almost trying to, like, take advantage of that. He could have just, you know, because remember, this guy also worked on Blake. And the other thing about this guy is, to me, all this time, I know there are NDAs and stuff, but all this time, we haven't had one person come out and be like, yo, dude is good dude. Not one. Like, that also says a lot to me. Because, yeah, there are a lot of people who are still working at X-Men 97. Not all of them. I'm sure some of them didn't get retained for season two. I know a lot of people ain't on Blade anymore. So at least those people, there's probably hundreds of people maybe who could speak to what the Bo DeMeo was like. He worked in the writer's room. Not one could be like, hey, dude's good dude. Like, I hope everything's well, or I don't think that he did this. Like, they didn't, nobody was saying anything. And I know there is no. an aspect of like people want to maybe keep predicting their futures, but if he was this guy that was like railroaded, I feel like somebody would have been like, hey, man, this is he's a good dude. If I didn't nobody doing right. that, now his first move is, is to get a lawyer to talk about what he's tweeting. Uh, this doesn't look good for him. So two things. So only to that last point, I will say, while you're right, that no one has no one has definitely no one has come out and been like, you know, you know, I stand with him in the last four or five months. Nobody, you know, because I think everybody knows it's a very it's, even from the jump that we knew this was a very, a very awkward, delicate situation. For whatever happened, but apparently, and I and I va- I, va- I do remember this vaguely. But he, when when the show was airing, I think we I want to say it may have been I don't want to I don't wanna get it wrong, but I know that there was a there was a spot in Los Angeles. I want to say it was there was there's some cantina bar. I want to say it's Kevin Smith's, uh, you know, where he shoots his show every week, and they would do like an X Men ninety seven I don't know watch party or something. And Bo DeMeo, they'd have a lot of the cast and crew there. Bo DeMeo would be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so people are hearkening back to that and saying, like, well, I mean, you know, if he's there and he's mingling with other cast members, you know, voice actors on the show, like, you know, and doing interviews and stuff, and he's there almost every week, you know. Yeah, he's not like, and this is like we've seen on Twitter. Like, he's not, he wasn't hiding. This is no, which we no. all agree is very bizarre we thought it was bizarre at the time. We, it was to the point where we were like, he must, whatever he did must not have been that crazy because I just feel like anybody, any sane, rational person wouldn't be tweeting every day yep. if that were the case. But so just that does add that context of for whatever reason, for whatever it's worth, there was some level of, you know, still, they wasn't like, they, they were like, oh, well, I, I'm not going there, Bo DeMeo showing up every week. Like, 
to that point. But uh, to, on your point about like you know Marvel doing him a solid, I mean, I, I me and Shamari talked about this a couple days ago, but to me, this reminds me a lot of, and I've said this for the past few months as this thing's been playing out, is remind me a lot of in in in, in the sports world, the Ime Udoka situation with the Boston Celtics, where. You know, he, you know, coach of the Celtics was fired over seemingly, uh, you know, we, again, to be, to be frank, we don't know exactly what happened because Still, yeah. <laughs> they were smart. The, you know, the Celtics, you know, they, they fired him, you know, they didn't really say why they just said we had an investigation, you know, company policy, we had to fire him. Ime Odoka never said anything. And, you know, a year later he got hired, he <laughs> got another NBA job as coach of the Houston Rockets. Um, we can, you know, through some reporting, we surmise that there may have been a uh, extramarital affair that happened within the organization. And, you know, to what area, to what degree did that go? We don't really know, but that's the point. Again, it never, we never, it never came out because both sides came to the acknowledgement that we're just never, ever going to talk about it. Marvel, again, seemed like they were going to handle this in a similar manner. Yeah. They were like, oh, you're out, you're done, quick and easy, but we're never going to say anything about this. As far as, you know, we're going to we're gonna let you do whatever you do you. You can have a career if you want. I mean, I'm sure people, it was a very public thing, so, you know, he'll have to work that out himself. But um, they weren't going to say anything, but Bo DeMeo kept poking the bear. He kept poking the bear. And this week, when I saw that Emmy's story and that Emmy's tweet where he was complaining about not going, I... My first reaction immediately was Marvel's going to Marvel's going to they're going to go after this guy because he can't <laughs> keep talking like this. Like and then literally a day later, that's when we got the report from Hollywood Reporter. And I said, you guys text me and this guy was flying way too close. Yeah, because they're like this was unprovoked. Like <laughs> this was completely unprovoked. You know, these attacks. Now, again, we can argue, you know, again, his timeline is suggesting that. They stripped they that they stripped that he came out with that post the Cyclops post and that because of that that's when they decided we're stripping you of your you know credit now Jeff Snyder is clarifying that they can't strip him of his writing credit you know this WGA stuff yeah. but that they're stripping of his executive producer credit he's he's arguing it's because of that post. I think that that one, I think it's semantics. I don't, I don't even think, any, think anybody cares, but two, I think that that is, even if, even if it's not semantics, I, I think that that is just conveniently ignoring, like, why were you fired? That would, right. like, that would be my, that would be my question. That would be my follow up. Why would they because, not want, why would they not want you posting about this show? <laughs> right. And like, you well, were, cause, cause you were fired. Cause we've seen this now get mixed up for some people in the media there are there's articles and tweets being like Bo DeMeo says he was fired over this tweet, and I'm like the tweet came out in June. Yeah, nothing he was to do with fired that. in March. Yeah, the that the the, the 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 he's just saying apparently that 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 post got his EP credit taken away for season two. That's not the that's not again that's not the nexus and the genesis of these issues. That 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 happened after the show season one came out, and and, and this that and the other. So he's deflecting and going to an issue that I feel like he thinks that he can win on that argument. I think he thinks that he can win on the idea that, you know, I should be allowed to this, I, you know, I made this show. Um, I should be allowed to post about it. I should be allowed to tweet about it. I shouldn't be held under an NDA and this and that. And, and the that's, idea that, that and that's and all fine and dandy. Yeah. And the idea that also that like a, a post about me celebrating pride should not lead to me losing yeah. credit. Like right, that, which, is 100%, that aspect which is one hundred percent. Which is one hundred percent fair. I think now, personally, I think that that is. I think he's playing a dangerous game by trying to use that as shielding and cover. Yep. You know, doing yep. that, but but if, if in good faith, I think that that is a fair uh, thing to say. Um, but at the end of the day, like this guy, like Marvel, they don't. They're not just picking on him for no reason. Like at the end of the, like they they have no reason there's something this started somewhere, and at the end of the day he's gonna have to answer for where why these things started, and he's not doing that right now, and that's the yeah. crux of this yeah i mean this is uh this is 
Um, yeah, there's just, there's just a lot to say. I agree with everything that both of you guys said. Um, I think if these allegations are true, Golden Mayo is, is – and this is something that, you know, I'm not the first person to say this, but he's doing a lot – potentially doing a lot of damage to – Minority creators. Mm. I can't speak for the LGBT community, um, but creators that are in that community that don't get opportunities like this, that may, you know, he's very fortunate. He's very, he is very, he's a very fortunate person. Not to say that maybe he didn't work really hard to get there, obviously, but he's very fortunate to be in the position that he's in and to be kind of abuse that power, essentially, uh, you know, allegedly. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this position is, you know, horrible. And it, and it, it, it just sets, it just sets, it just sets people back, you know, it's, it's not, so it's very selfish. And, and, and if this, if these allegations are true, and I just think that's very unfortunate. Um, so I think that, I think that's something that just needs to be said. It's, I also don't think that uh, Disney is like blameless in this situation. Mm. Um, just I in the sense of, happy. If this is if this was going on for however long it was going on, and they knew, and he was still there, you know, they didn't. They were willing to just, oh, okay, well, you know, the season's over now, so all right, go, yeah, know, that, go that's interesting. Um, when did they? Know, when did exactly? Did you know, they find whenever out? like Jeff Snyder adds that detail of, you know, they told him to stop and he did it, and that's always right. we. I think we heard similar reporting about Ime Udoka as well. Again, none yeah. of this was was corroborated but there were some rumors and stuff about yeah Celtics kind of told him chill out yep. and he didn't and things escalated to a certain point and yeah. that and that's a common thing that we see in court in these these big level corporations with people at the top you know for our people high up in these companies is that they they'll give him they'll give him a couple of strikes before they have to really act on it and that's really yeah. if you're going to give them uh heat I would say depending on the severity of whatever allegations came out, you know, that they were, that, that were put to bring, brung to their attention that you, certain things you can't give multiple strikes on certain things is one yeah. strike and you're out. It kind of, so it kind of, kind of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it explains, but it definitely kind of makes you understand why they were willing to just let this go. Um, Cause it, you know, maybe someone at some point was like, it doesn't look good that we just let this guy stay here after he did all this so let's just let him go right. and just just leave it alone but but yeah it's it's doesn't look good for disney or marvel kevin feige all of those everyone there at leadership that someone knew people knew this was going on and i think it might have been the snyder story out. sham i'm not sure but i think it was another story it cannot correct me if I'm wrong where they tried to distance kevin from this they basically tried to say yes. that he didn't hire this is on winter bomb this is a winder bomb hire, a winder bomb situation. I didn't like that. Um, <laughs> that whether that's I, I true that or not, funny. whether that's true or not, and maybe Jeff still has to write that. But I don't know if he does. I'll be honest. If anything, I'll just maybe like, criticize just Jeff like, a little bit. It, it just, oh, ahead, just like uh, Jim Harbaugh didn't know about uh, Connor Stallion. Right. Uh, it just felt like and, it felt and, like and you were giving Rick him. Rick didn't know about all the crazy stuff that happened to Louisville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> None of these guys know anything. Right? Yeah. It's like I mean. He's the head of Marvel. Like, I, I don't think you need to go out of your way to be like, this is not on Kevin Feige. Uh, even if that's how people feel. Like, I, I, I mean, even if that is the truth. I just think that in a weird way, like, he is still the head of Marvel. He He's letting Wyndham make hires. So, like, you can't... I'm not saying, say, oh, this is Kevin Feige's fault. I just don't know if I needed right. multiple sentences explaining how this is not Kevin Feige's fault, if that makes sense. Right. Uh, because you but, didn't have to, do, you didn't say that about Bob Iger. Nope. You know, there's yeah. certain level yeah, why did of you like. Say, why did you say, hey, Bob Iger, you know, he didn't hire uh, Windham, <laughs> but he didn't hire Bodemeyer. Right. So he, like, you're not doing that for him. <laughs> why are you doing it with Kevin Feige? So, um, felt like a little bit, I don't know, I'm not going to say more than that. But I just, I think that I wish that that was not an article. But I think Shamari makes a good point about Disney being culpable still and Marvel culpable still. But I'll go on a different front. I think that you could, you could make a case that this is a cover up. Like, I mean, like, mm. when you talk about you have this show coming out, you fire dude, nobody knows why. <laughs> nobody knows why. We have all these months. If Bodemile just shuts the F up, we never know why. Let's be real. Yeah. 
Uh, no. Unless someone decides to break an NDA randomly and say, hey, this is what I experienced, which in our today's society, maybe it's more likely than it would have been 10 years. But but the, the plan was for that. This, nobody would ever know. Uh, that doesn't feel good to me. I don't think this was, I think it's a little, I think there are a lot of parallels between the Emil Doka story. I think there are reasons to suggest and both the Celtics still get criticized for it. I think there are, I think Kettle makes fair points to, as to why people will say the Celtics did the right thing. But I think this is, this is different. Like this this is criminal behavior yep. that you're not identifying at all. And I'm not saying you have to say Bo did this to this person to because I know the big thing also with the Celtics team was identifying people. But the fact that we didn't even know it was sexual misconduct. We didn't know that until Friday. Like that like that's different. Like and then you and then we hear the details from Jeff and he's sending new photos. It's like you don't know how that traumatized people. You don't know, like you don't know how that affected people. Like from your boss, right? Like I think for this amount of time to go by and you don't say anything about why he got fired, to me, suggests you wanted to keep all bad news (laughs) close to the vest, all bad news as 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 in check as possible. You could only do so much because you had nothing to fire you. But to me. As much as it would have been to protect him, and I think to some degree there was some of that, I think also a lot of this was protecting Disney and protecting Marvel, which, I, I, which I, I, is always ridiculous to me. Like, anytime these corporations do this, it pisses me off because I'm like, I just don't think any, like, I don't think any rational person is going to blame Disney for, like, Bo DeMaio doing something allegedly extremely creepy and borderline, or maybe I mean borderline criminal. Like I, nobody knows, dude is like this. Like you know what I'm saying. So when corporations right. do these now, weird things, like yeah, somebody gonna blame. Of course, someone's gonna blame me for everything. Now, but the idea that you would not say, oh, if you could say, hey, look, we we saw what happened and we fired him because we realized this is not what we allow in our company. You're gonna get criticized, but okay, at least we know why a guy got fired. You're not trying to hide it. You're not doing anything. Like this feels like you were trying to hide information about why guy got fired because it made you look you think it made you look bad which i don't think it really even did like that's the part of this that uh for me is why i have a beef with marvel and disney today now ej one thing i will say and this may have influenced their decision as well and i think i think snyder points this out as well I, you guys could bring yeah i think i know what you're gonna say yeah and you're probably gonna bring it up too like he did have previous issues with like the witcher, the witcher apparently right. Right. There were other things right. that he worked on, and that's that's what we so had heard. It, it does reflect poorly on them in terms of them not doing their due diligence on this guy, right? And, and, and he from, writes that in his article, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah bringing from that, 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 that as well, yeah. yeah so they yeah, may have bomb. Bomb that's potentially, you know, predatory or whatever, right? And right. they just, you know, they just did it. They just didn't care, essentially. The yeah, that's and that we had we had heard that stuff for a while. That's that's why people surmised that these issues probably were kind of similar. Was right, right. you know that was what people were saying. You know that that these were these things were out for you know for a while now. Like it wasn't like this innuendo, but like you look, The Witcher is not Marvel, right? So there's not this big fanfare. There's not this big telescope and scrutiny that you're under when you <laughs> you get you know bounced from a from the witcher it's like you know that's a that's a, a small blurb in an article in variety as opposed to a big expose um but it's you know it that is that is an interesting aspect to it i think the big i think the big thing that, that we'll figure this out and i am not as i'm not as 100% certain that the allegations are as severe as maybe we might think they are. And maybe I'm just giving Bo too much benefit of the doubt because he's been so adamant and he's been so out there. Maybe I'm just thinking pragmac- pragmatically and I'm and this is an actor that is not thinking pragmatically at all. But I just feel like the lawyer... The fact that he's lawyered up and, you know, I, all these guys lawyer up, right? Even the most heinous of criminals are going to lawyer up and have a statement and say, I'm going to have my side of the story. But, you know, the way he's painted it, uh, while I don't think that he has much of a leg to stand on, I, you know, I do wonder if there is 
if this is more of a morally bad thing and less of a criminally bad thing, and, and that's why D- Disney and Marvel kind of took the stance of, and we saw that a little bit with Emei Udoka, right? Like, you know, again, we don't know how bad it was, but I think we all understood that it wasn't anything that he was going to, he wasn't, wasn't anything like he was going to get arrested for. It was just like, definitely violations of HR policy, maybe scumbag behavior, but we really don't know. Again, all that was sort of, uh, all that was sort of, you know, gray area innuendo at that point. Uh, with this, it feels like that not even morally gray seems like <laughs> morally wrong, yeah. maybe criminally wrong, but maybe not. And so that's why I say to myself, if, if it's not criminal, then at that point, Marvel doesn't have, an, they have an obligation to do whatever, go through whatever HR, you know, procedures they have and just ethical procedures that any company should go through. But in terms of the reporting to the media and this and that, I think that that is more of a gray area at that point. If this is something where, and again, I don't know, you know, if, if you know, we, we depend, like, like, for example, like the nature of the pictures, right? Like, I don't know. I haven't seen them, you know, and, you know, depending on what they were, what they look like, whatever, I mean, if they, that if could they, be a gray if they, area. I mean, if they nude, I just don't know if there's any gray area. With yeah, that. I don't. Yeah, I don't think they get. I, 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 I don't know if pictures. that's. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. It, it's it's. I think, but if it's that, like I don't know, like if it's the, but I don't know. You got like the East. Again, this is all. This is all conjecture, but like I don't know. You see the ESPN body cover, right? Or the ESPN right. body yeah, issue. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, are, I those are technically nude, is, but it's like, yeah. is that illegal to just? Yeah, to, there is to, a difference to, between like full frontal nude. Right, and, right. Like, you know, again, all these things like are, are no, there might be small like things, but like this is why I say like criminal versus just like you're, you're you know, this is body admiration. I don't yeah, know, yeah. Right. You know, these are all things that that I think are an, inter- an interesting aspect, but that's where I think the details are important uh, in terms of determining blame and you know how the outcome of this should have played out. But I think we all know that. The hard line thing is that I think Disney did the right thing, obviously, in in swiftly getting rid of him. And I think that that's why I think DeMeo's in a bad spot is he's trying to argue something when Disney, if they, I'm assuming they have one of the better HR departments in the, in the country in terms of, and I'm not saying that from like, a, they're going to do the right thing, but I'm just in terms of their protecting the company. legally, yeah, protecting yeah, yeah. the company. I'm sure they're legally, they dot every I and check every T. Yeah. Or you know, cross every T. I don't think that you're going to beat Disney in a PR HR legal battle. Um, they fired him immediately. They took they 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 this, these were in the reports at the time. Like they scrubbed him from the company. His email was gone. Everything. You're out. You know, you're you're not you're not a part of this ever again. And I don't think that happens unless they've gone through a thorough investigation. How fast that investigation was? Did it take a couple of days? And that's why they maybe, you know, DeMail is like, you guys didn't even give me a full chance to respond. And that's where maybe some, you know, dialogue can get, you know, shifted. But if this was a long, thorough investigation, um, then they definitely have receipts. And they definitely came to a conclusion, like EJ said, you said earlier, they probably saw what the people saw. You know, yeah, like, it's, you don't it's come to simple. that conclusion. If there was gray area, they wouldn't have fired him in such a swished and public manner. This really is just part of ways. Yeah. I mean, this isn't really like this kind of thing. It, it really isn't that he said, she said, if you're talking about sending texts right. <laughs> that have nude pictures right. or explicit pictures, right. they're just, it just all, it's, it's either it's there or it's not there. So once it's right. there, and, maybe you could say, I can explain context to it. But that context, that context has got to be so ironclad and so exactly. clean that like, it, it's got to present a lot of doubt to it not being what you think right. it is. That once that right. if that context isn't there, then it's it's a no brainer. Again, it's a no brainer. Right. You got to go. I mean, he needs like a real explanation. And like at an explanation of like I was trying to inspire, like I was, was inspiration for my staffers when yeah when, for writing a cartoon. Even that, it's like, yeah, even that's like I don't even know if I buy that. That 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 wouldn't fly. He would need to be. It would need to either not be as non-consensual as right now it's it's being reported as, which he should he should he should say that 
But it's, but it's just not hard. Nice. It's gonna be hard for him to defend that if he's doing it to multiple people. So you got yeah, that's the thing. Is if everybody has, that's the like thing. Four or five people. people want your nudes or want your explicit pictures. Like again, he's a buff, good-looking dude. But like that, that seems a little hard to believe. Like one person, right? right that maybe can become a he says he said a little bit. Five, six people. I'm, I'm throwing out numbers. We don't know how many, but if more than two, one and one. So two people, look, man, three Marvel, people maybe. Like that's hard to Disney, believe. Disney, like. Yeah. If the stuff with the Witcher is true, like they're right, gonna call, you got a background? yeah, and they're gonna yeah. they're gonna call it Hollywood Reporter or Variety or Deadline or Jeff Snyder and say, call so and so that worked on the Witcher, and they'll tell you everything you want to know about Bo Mail, and they will have an expose on his time at the Witcher and his time on every other show he's ever worked on, and this could get bad. And I don't, I again, I don't know if this is a fight he wants to take, but apparently it is. Which leads Indeed. me to the question of, like, why, if, if this is true, and these are still allegations, but if this is true, why is he doing this? There's a part of me that's like, maybe he kind of knows the jig is up, so he's like, I got to hold on to that season two EP credit, because maybe that's bread that could come to him in the future, potentially. Like, you know, maybe there's bread that just owed to him if you have a credit on the show. Like, I guess in theory, if you sell DVDs or whatever. That's only thing I, could, I mean, I, otherwise, I can't think of why else yeah. he'd be doing this. Yeah, honestly, I, I go back to what you said at the jump. You know, I think it's something in here. Like, he's just, it's like a, you know, I don't know, like a, a Trumpian kind of just, just, you know, I don't care. I'm right. I, blah, blah, blah. Like, he's just so, because, again, this is now repeated behavior. And for whatever reason, he feels so empowered that he feels like he could just do this and it shouldn't be an issue. And how dare you victimize me? And again, I, and, and he's also kind of using his status as a member of the LGBTQ plus community to kind of shield himself. And it's just, you know, it's just, it's just, maybe he's just not a good guy, which even in his tweet about the Emmy and certain things you can sort of, read into and like the way he's moved i mean the stuff him tweeting during the show when the show was coming out i think even all that is interesting because clearly marvel didn't want that clearly he was still doing it apparently you, you know reading between these lines like apparently they had come to an agreement when they when they severed ties that you know you won't tweet about the show or you won't you know talk about it yeah, because I'm sure there was. Some, least, I'm sure there was some. They may have given them some severance, even like they may have been some. Right, they may have given them some severance in part. You know, I mean, part of the the terms were probably again it was probably a version of an NDA, um, and you know there were certain things, and I think he handled it pretty well in terms of not like he wasn't going out there like all right now I'm just going to spoil the show every week, like he, he you know he. I think he helped the show with, with his I commentary. Think he, he absolutely helped the show, which again makes yeah. I don't know why he was doing any of the things he was doing because he was helping. Right. He was helping right. Marvel. No, I think he helped himself, like you know. But it was all temporary, one hundred percent. Yeah, it was all temporary. Was all right, like, and, and, like as soon as this comes out, now all that goodwill is is gone. Like I guess in right. theory, which maybe, is why I say like maybe somebody he, will say, "Look, I'm gonna give him a second chance," but like it's gonna be it's gonna be hard, like. Yeah, no, his approach has been terrible. Like I, the sexual I mean, misconduct, I think we all think he... like the sexual misconduct, do don't normally come back. Like this, we we live in this. You know, I, I I despise the word cancel culture, but just for the sake of just this conversation, we live in this cancel culture era, where like <laughs> people have issues and then they get fired or they they have they get you know disgraced, <laughs> and some people can come back. The sexual misconduct dude don't normally come back. Like I. Matt Lauer don't come back, you know the the Louis Louis C.K. don't come back. Like those folks, like you know Kevin Spacey, Kevin Spacey, like yeah, you know yeah. I mean, he's trying to come back. Like, yeah, dude. like they got to go do community right. theater. Like they're not they're not coming yeah. back to what. Uh, so like so for him, like I said before, maybe he knew the jig was up. So he's like, I gotta just like just put, keep my name out here and just keep people remembering that I did this work. So that like. Somehow, maybe once it does come out, somebody would say, "Hey, look! Regardless of what he did, he's a great, great talent." Which I think we all can acknowledge. Like he, did, he produced a hell of a show, one of the best shows mm-hmm. I've ever watched. But like, it's just we've seen it's just it's 
that that person doesn't come back. So I don't know if he's able to come back. Because in part, is like, again, you could do real trauma to people acting the way sexual misconduct folks act. So it's not like, a, oh, like, let's just get over and move on. It's like, well, you could be endangering people by putting them around people, putting them in the back of the workplace. That's why you don't bring back a Matt Lauer or Kevin Spacey or these people. Like, or Harvey Weinstein, you know, like, that. there's a reason why these people don't resurface in the mainstream anymore. So, uh, that's going to be the thing with him that I think is going to be hard for him to overcome. But I will say this, and I've seen a lot of people say this, and I, I, I feel like I've also commented as well, like, throughout this these months talking about Bo. I think it is very important. Like, Bo did a fantastic job. I'm never going to take anything away from him in terms of the product. It seems like the process to making that product was nasty, and there's a lot that was terrible about it, and I feel sick for those people that dealt with this with him. But what I want to say is, and a lot of people have said this, there are dozens, if not hundreds of people who worked on X-Men 97. There are a lot of writers, a lot of animators, a lot of people who were coming up with ideas, coming up with visions for the show. It wasn't one man's brain and then everyone else just does the work and then whatever. Like, I think, I hope this is um, a lesson in that we should really, you know, just not give all of the praise to just one person. Right. Deify. Yeah. And deify just one person. I feel like because the show was so good, like, I, and, and to a certain degree, I understand, like, this was an awesome show. So then Bo had a lot of fans. And Bo strikes himself as an advocate for the LGBTQ uh, people, community, especially for people of color. So I, I totally understand why someone like that would have a lot of followers, a lot of fans. But I think what we had seen was this this like unconditional uh, you know, protection of him and support of him without any information of why he was let go. And what we also saw when there was moves to move on from him to make someone else a new showrunner. Or to make someone else do the new X Men uh, screenwriting for the new live action movie. Not a lot of people wanted Bo DeMeo to do it. There was a lot of things. Oh, Marvel screwing up, or blah blah. blah. It's, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, you a, never heard me or any of us say. No, you never hear that it. on the show for <laughs> from us. I'm talking about what's out there in, in in the lexicon. I'm saying, yeah, this should be a lesson to people that a we shouldn't be deifying these folks when we don't know who they are. B also is a little disrespectful to the other people who work on this stuff. You know, like he's a great creator, clearly. Uh, well, I don't know if I say a great creator because great creator doesn't, you know, light his show on fire the way he did. But he's a he's talented. A, he's a talented creator. That's a better way to put it. He's a talented creator for sure, but he didn't do it alone, and he couldn't do it alone. So I have, as a super fan of X Men the animated series and X Men ninety seven, I'm giving my full fledged support and love to all the people who are still working on the show. Season two probably coming out next year. Uh, they had a really, you know, it looks like a really cool panel over there at Comic Con, oh, excuse me, at uh, D23, talking about next season. I'm excited for it, and I hope people continue to support it and know and that, like, we will move on. We will survive post the Bo DeMail era. And and, and you know? I, it's funny, because I was going to mention that earlier, and I lost my train of thought slightly, but um, I went off on a tangent, but he tweeted, one of his tweets, the tweet about the Emmys, where he's, you know, he says, this is the show that I created. It's like, I mean, not, look, you know, well, again, like you said, not a we created, not a, yeah. you know, this is a this is a revival of an old right, show. Exactly. Again, not, real, not here yeah, to throw put, stones. Put some respect on, at, uh, put some respect uh, yeah. on Larry Houston's name because that's that's yeah. a little right disrespectful, I think. Yeah, right. I mean, I mean, yeah. he, I mean, I, I, I don't. He played a, a big part in it. So of I'm course, not, yeah. I'm not saying he right. shouldn't, you know. Right, like look at, look at like, the project as a project of his. Like that's one hundred percent. He but, should feel that way. He, it wasn't just him, so yeah. Right, it, but definitely, like when you're framing it like that in this right. thing of the Emmys, like oh, you're gonna you're not gonna let me go there for the show I created. Like, dog, this is an existing IP. Like you, you didn't. You're not Stan Lee. You know, you're you're not. <laughs> right. You know, again, you're not you're not Jonathan Hickman or. Chris Claremont, like, you didn't create the X-Men or anything like that. Like, this would be different if we were talking about, I don't know, like, regular show. You know, J.D. Quintel was like, yeah, you created regular show. You know, like, you created that, you, you know, this is your idea, and then you brought yeah. on people to your idea. X-Men 97, like, that, I don't know who created I think Kevin Feige's idea, probably, or some other guy. 
you know, and they they went and they got him to write it, like, and he did a great job with it. But like, <laughs> you know, again, I think that there's a and there's a and when you start looking at people and trying to judge character a little bit, you're like, uh, you know, I don't know, like, if if the best people will be talking like that, not a person, but I don't know. You yeah, know, I'm not gonna throw stones at him, but. I just think that there's a certain way you got a certain humility you have to have sometimes. No, I think that is totally fair, especially considering, um, you know, again, the people that, that created X-Men, the animated series, they created the show. Let's be real. Like, and, and the guy, you know, the, the Larry Houston that, and Julia Lee Walls, like, I want to make sure that those like, right. I see what I see what he is saying, but it's like, you're right. Like, when you think about. Like this is not something that's this is not Avatar: The Last Airbender, where you, you right. create something out of scratch that you no one's done. You know that'd be like again that'd be like you know if what's the guy's name like uh well, I can't remember his name though Sam Raimi who's like I created Spider Man. He'd be like uh, right, like, calm down. Like, or like or like if Dave Filoni was or, or his, right. his starting right, right like, yeah sure that I created right like, yeah I mean we right. all look at you like, like <laughs> come on dog like that's crazy <laughs> so yeah right. So I mean, again, like uh, I, I hope the people who may have a this who, isn't uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. This isn't over, by the way. <laughs> you know, like this subject's not over. It, it, this will continue. No, and that's unfortunately. I yeah, I was gonna say that's kind of unfortunate. I kind of wish. I, I wish in some ways it would end here. If it's not true, then I hope it doesn't. If it's not true, then I hope Bo defends himself. He shows that this was not the case, and that I've been. It's the worst or, beer campaign or that we've ever seen. Or exaggerated, or whatever or it's the situation. greatly exaggerated. Like, yeah, if he yeah. can prove that, then yeah, I, I want him to come out and defend himself. To me, I feel like Bo. I think he. I think he thinks his leg to stand on is Disney probably has done and did some shady things throughout this whole process. That he's like, I'm gonna make you guys try and look bad. If, 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 if I'm going down, you guys are going down. Right, but, but that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I don't want to see. I'm not interested. Yeah, that's, that's what I think he's trying to do. Yeah, that's that's something I'm not interested in. Like, because a, it's not going to work. Uh, Disney's right. too big to fail. I'm just being real. Like, it's, you know, yeah, just nothing he can show or say that's going to make people feel. Right. Oh, damn! Like, I guess I should not watch like, X Men ninety seven season two. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. come on, like it's just not happening. <laughs> like, so like the A is not, uh, and B, it just feels like it's going to become a muslinging. I don't really want to know more about what you may have done. Like, I know enough. If this is what happened and what Jeff Snyder is true, I know enough. I don't need to then see pictures getting leaked because that's what's gonna. It's gonna get nasty. You said, "No, I don't want that to happen." Uh, I think for all best parties, the best for all parties, just move on, um, and him try to help better himself and get back into the game because we know he's a very talented creator, like I said. And for Disney to continue to do what they're doing, Marvel's they're doing, but I agree, and I don't think that that's gonna be the case. But uh, staying on Disney, though, there was. D23 last week. And we kind of were wondering what was going to happen because it was so close to Comic-Con and how much they were going to show. And I think it was kind of predictable in that, like, that you know, the movies took center stage really at Comic-Con. So they really allowed, I felt like, the TV shows to take center stage in their D23 presence. So they had the Marvel Studios, uh, you know, presentation. It did include Thunderbolts. Uh, they had a trailer. Um there was a trailer for or new footage for Captain America: Brave New World, but they really also gave a lot of uh, you know attention to the TV show. So Fantastic Iron, Four has some stuff. Fantastic Four has some stuff as well. But um, Ironheart, Daredevil, uh, Agatha, uh, Agatha, you know Agatha all along, which had a whole musical number with Catherine Hahn that she did there, um, and then of course again there was a Marvel animation. Channel as well that talked about Spider Man, the friendly neighborhood Spider Man, and X Men 97 season two, and what if as well. What stood out to you, uh, uh, uh Shamari? Well, of the things that you saw, there were a lot of trailers that that, that came out. Um, of course, we were there, that, right? Yeah. So we saw everything. Well, no, we were not there, and ones that were not released to the public officially but were leaked online. I think we'll have a lot of conversation about that, but even before we get to that, uh, of the details and stuff that you that you saw. Third hand or second hand, or uh, what stood out to you? Oh, of, of the you know detailed writings of the trailers, <laughs> descriptions. Sounds pretty happened. good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it sounds like people had a fun time out there. 
yeah, you know, hopefully we'll get out there one day, man. D23, that'd be a good trip. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, I think that um, – I think the Dare the, – honestly, the Daredevil trailer was very good, in which – Honestly, it's par for the course for these Daredevil trails. Daredevil trails are always very good. But that's yes. what this one um, was also very good. Uh, it got me very excited, you know. Um, and again, I did not see uh, what he did in She Hulk, to be fair. So, I, you know, I, I guess I'm not totally caught up. In- you didn't miss anything. I mean, what you saw yeah, in the trailer, what you saw from the trailer <laughs> that would. That relates to what happened in She Hulk. And I don't say that <laughs> saying that I disliked She Hulk. I liked She Hulk and I liked his addition to it. I liked his right. episode. I thought his episode was maybe the best episode of the season. I'm just saying that that is like it's totally, totally different. He's literally wearing a different costume. Like there's not you don't have to watch anything from She Hulk to, to watch that trailer. Like there's nothing, there's no continuation from that. Just uh, uh, maybe of, small yeah. continuation, but I'll get to that in a second. But very little. All right, well that's good. Um, but yeah, it looked Daredevil looked great. You know, seeing you know Kingpin and um, seeing uh, Bullseye again. We got to see a, a short short blip of him in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh man, <laughs> he's back and White Tiger and Punisher and I mean they're just stacking things on top of things. And it's like okay, this is this is what I want to see from Marvel television. If they can. Just move forward with this. Marvel can, I think they are kind of underestimate how much cachet they can get back with a, a good like if Daredevil is good, they earn a lot of trust back from people, myself included, because that would just be fantastic. So you know that because Marvel, their TV since like that first year on Disney Plus or their their streaming shows, it, it hasn't really been hitting. Quite the same, but Daredevil can really get them back on track. So, to me, that's one thing that also stood out stood out to me as well regarding regarding uh, you know what we saw in D twenty three. Um, and shout out to uh, Charles Soule as well, who writes a lot of Star Wars, and which of course Kendall, Kendall's aware of as well. Um, one of the villains that he created apparently he did a Daredevil run. Uh, yeah, he's going to be featured. Yeah, he's going to be featured in in this show. So I'm pretty looks like maybe the villain of the season. Yeah, yeah, possibly. I forgot Soul created him because I looked him up and I think I saw that. I was like, Charles Soul, I totally forgot you glad you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. He was he was talking about it on social media, how he was excited to see the character and that they, they seem to have done him justice as well, apparently. So he, he's not complaining that he's not gonna get the invite to the Emmys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were no complaints and no uh yeah, it's not a uh, Wendig situation either where he's like, Where's my credit? I'm not yeah, in the credit. Yeah. You know, or anything, anything along those lines. So shout out to Chuck Wendig. Um, but yeah, no, that so that was a highlight for me. Definitely was there, though. What about you, Kendall? What about what was the highlight for you? Um, man, I mean, I, like, I, I mean, I, 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 I would say Daredevil as well. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna to lie. I mean, Daredevil is definitely the best thing I think they showed. I, I think Marvel's showing the, uh, I think Marvel's learned that all you have to do with Daredevil is just make the same show that we had before and just continue and. You're gonna you're gonna have a massive success, particularly with the Marvel bump. There's a Marvel bump. There's a Mar- putting the Marvel Studios, you know, you know, machine behind a Daredevil show. Like ne- the Netflix thing was real. Netflix had a lot of, you know, they had a lot of they had a lot of powers of their own. But like in the superhero space, in the geek culture space, Marvel Studios is reign supreme. So to, for them to be able to put their energy behind it, it's like the boys. You know, if the boys all of a sudden became a Marvel Studios property, be even way bigger than it is now. And you know, there's certain there are a lot of shows that are like that, and a lot of things that are like that in our in our industry. But um the Daredevil show and all those Defender shows were great, but you know, they were kind of shunned by Marvel Studios in a way. They were sort of ignored by Marvel Studios. And that despite Netflix clearly trying to, you know, associate them with the Marvel Studios yeah. brand and you know, kept trying to kind of put them in that mix, and Marvel kept saying, "I, I don't know what you're talking about." <laughs> what's a Daredevil? <laughs> not Avengers for me. <laughs> yeah, what's a Daredevil? And uh, now that they're fully embracing it, and it's sort of like a, you know, it's sort of like the Thanos meme of, you know, you know, look where, you, look where, you look how you failed, and how you're coming right back to me. Yeah. You know, because now they need Daredevil more than 
Daredevil needs Daredevil. Daredevil, Daredevil, Daredevil ever needed them, you know? Definitely. <laughs> like this is this is huge for them. Like Shamari said, this is getting them back on track um, in a way that you know we've seen them sort of falter a little bit, you know. And it's ironic because the last big thing that they had was also a non MCU thing, which being Deadpool, like bringing that into the fold and that being a massive success for them, and not bringing or Daredevil X-Men 97. The also. Yeah, X Men ninety seven. Another thing, not an originally MCU, you know, thing. Like, you know, they're they're now you know capitalizing off these things, and that's just smart business. Like, they for a long time obviously were very protective of their own shield. You know, they were kind of like the NFL, where they were just like, you know, we didn't create it; it's not ours. You know, and it's it's smart that they're going this route, you know, initially they, they initially they were kind of being pompous with this show and saying like, yeah, we're going to bring back Charlie Cox and, you know, D'Onofrio, but like, we're going to make it our own thing. We're going to put a Marvel spin on it and we're going to make it unique and different. And, you know, from what we had heard from the show, it sounded kind of mid and, uh, it sounded very average and, you know, given all the, the, the troubles that they were having with their other properties, Kevin Feige was like, we're going to the drawing board with everything. That includes Daredevil. This thing's clearly not coming together. They watched, they watched like an episode, and they were like, "This is a snooze fest," and they were like, "We're going to the drawing board." And I can't speak for how bad or good it was before, but I can say that the trailer that we saw, uh, allegedly saw, uh, <laughs> was uh, incredible. Um, looks like the original show. I'm not sure about everything else, man. I mean, mm-hmm. I thought Thunderbolts was is another one where I'm just like, I. I still haven't figured out why we're making this movie. Uh, it hasn't. It still hasn't come to me. We, we've now known about this movie for like at least a couple of years, and I still haven't figured out why we're making it, why we need it. There was a point in which I thought, like, oh, maybe this is going to be like a good like Black Widow sequel, and I still kind of feel like that's probably the point of this thing. But I'm watching this trailer, and I'm like, is this really a good Black Widow sequel, or is this just like a hodgepodge of like? Also Rans and MCU and Bucky. I guess Bucky's not really an also ran, but a hodgepodge of MCU also rans and you know, maybe Elena has has a lot of upside, but I feel like you could have put those characters in anything. Like you they didn't have to be like I don't know. It, it's, the whole thing just seems like a mess. I mean, Taskmaster has a new suit, Ghost has a new suit, they both stink. They both look the same. They're both if you've seen pictures, like they both have white masks, but one Taskmaster has eyes, the ghost one doesn't. Yeah. Like Taskmaster still doesn't have a skull, you know. That like it's just things all over the place, and and it doesn't look that. I'd be honest, it doesn't look that good. There's still a lot of super soldiers for me. Like yeah, like at least three. I mean, super soldiers on a on one team. Like I don't know. There's just there's too much. And I just and I think you know jump into Thunderbolts. I think I like Val, but Marvel has not done enough to put over Val in a way that makes me interested or invested or care. And it sucks that Julia Louise Dreyfus is as an incredible actress. Um, and I love seeing her do this kind of role, a role that is more drama. Um, but she's able to bring the community chops, you know, to make it almost like dark humor that does the role she's playing in this Marvel universe. But it's just seeing her, there and her being kind of the centerpiece that brings them together it just wasn't enough to put that over the top is anyone else curious why that why there's an asterisk by the title of this movie like i know there's a that the rumor that like maybe this is actually a dark avengers movie and that's why it's an asterisk by thunderbolts um and it's funny because thunderbolt ross is obviously clearly the president so like it doesn't it there's been zero indication that he has anything to do with this movie Ooh. um and I think one of the actors I've been seeing recently was like, yeah, I can't really speak to like why the asterisk is there yet. But like when we had first heard about this movie, it seemed like it was going to like tie in the New World Order. But now it kind of feels like New World Order kind of is its own thing and that this is yeah. sort of its own thing. That's what it feels like. And maybe that's just smart marketing by Marvel to sort of like, you know, in this modern elite culture to sort of try and trick people into thinking that they're separate and then it being very clear that they're not, but um, that seems like that talk has sort of subsided and the New World Order went through a lot of changes, obviously, and and I think I'm sure this movie did as well. 
Uh, so I think that could have changed. But it's funny because the Dark Avengers thing, like some may look at that, and I've heard people say this, and some may look at that and say, you know, they're going to switch it to Dark Avengers if you know, like it doesn't really gain traction. Like the Thunderbolts name never if it doesn't stick. And it looks like it's not going to do well. They can just like Harley Quinn. They can just be all right. Yep, we're changing the name to uh, Birds of Prey to Harley Quinn in the emancipation of whatever, whatever. And it's like. You know, you know, I'm just not a fan of that. Even with the Agatha thing and oh, what's the title? And it's like I don't, I don't like that. Like, just yeah, I don't think it's, I don't it. think it's good business. Like, no. did Birds of Prey really make that much money putting the Harley Quinn name in the in the Birds of Prey title? I don't know. I don't think Sorry people even knew that it was in there. Like, I, like again, I go back <laughs> to that Kevin Feige quote, like, which I think is a thing I've been saying for years on this show that like people just don't know anything. Like, they're just they don't pay attention right. as close as we do. Or as close as like the, the biggest sweaties, RIP uh, John Snap, the biggest sweaties do. Like they just show up to the movie, they have a vague idea of like when the movie, <laughs> you know, was coming out, and they just show up. They don't like these little things of changing the title a lot. Like these little things don't do much. And if anything, I think it hurts the movie, not helps it. So I, I don't think it worked with Birds of Prey. Um, Avengers is such a big name that maybe it would make a difference, but I, I, I think it wouldn't make, I think people. People wouldn't even know that it was originally Thunderbolts. I think they would just be like, "Oh, there's another Avengers movie coming." Yeah. Okay, I guess I'll go watch that. And, and I think they wouldn't even realize, "Oh, that, that, it, was, it used to be Thunderbolts, but now it's Avengers." Like only ten percent of the audience would know that. I, and I would also say if we're we're more comic book uh, savvy than like the general public, but I think that you're playing a very dangerous game if they did decide, like, "Yeah, we're going to call this Dark Avengers." Um, I think that that's terrible business because, like, I think the Dark Avengers is a brand that they yeah. should hold on to yeah, for yeah, when they do. seriously want to do yeah, a good I'll, version. By the way, yeah, someone putting that on on a not. movie that looks mid. By the way, yeah. as, as, as someone business. who is who read all of Dark Reign, right. who read a lot of Dark Avengers, I heard this and I was actually upset. I was yeah. like, "This is not the Dark Avengers. <laughs> this is yeah, not <laughs> like Dark Dark Avengers was something specific." It was Norman Osborn, <laughs> Iron Patriot. It was taking the oh, Thunderbolts right. and turning them into versions of the Avengers to trick the bullseye, the, to trick the the, the the public into thinking that oh, like it's Spider Man, but it's actually Venom. But they don't know. Oh, look, it's Hawkeye, but it's actually Bullseye. Like they don't know because these people are all secret identity people anyway. Right. So there was a there there was something about them dressing up as the Avengers and then trying to. Be the Avengers like, and how this would be secret that was invasion be. all over again. It'd be secret invasion all over again, exactly. Like a story that I love that they're gonna just right. turn into whatever they want for the sake of catching the eye of someone like me. So I was <laughs> like, oh, well, like there's gonna be some comic right. Oh, I like Dark Avengers. I'm gonna go watch that. And they're gonna be like, wait, where's Norman Osborn? Where's Moonstone? Like they're not gonna like they're all gonna be confused, and it's gonna be like this is dumb. This is nothing like the the, the comic book. So I, I hope to yeah. God that's not true because like the Dark Avengers is actually a great idea, something that they definitely I thought could have done if they wanted to go down the line because you had this kind of weird of we're in a weird era of the Avengers right now. Like it, it, it really, this would be a perfect time to do something like this. But you don't have any of the other characters and the people in place to make that happen, so it's just not feasible right now. So I would hate this. Um, I thought the trailer. I agree with you guys. I thought the trailer was. It was just okay. It just there's nothing special really about it. I I know people love Ray. I know a lot of people really like Red Guardian. He's okay to me. Like I know, like I I I. It's an acquired taste for sure. Yeah, he's an acquired taste. It, you know, he's so ridiculous. It's hard. He's not supposed to be taken seriously. But like I don't know. I feel like it's. I feel like a Black Widow is kind of a serious movie. I feel like this is kind of a serious movie. Like he's so like different than everyone else. Like I don't I don't. Like he he's not really for me. Um, this trail had a lot of him in it, so that wasn't that was automatically not going to do much. Like I needed more. It's, Bucky, it's funny because more even more land than I had for this trailer probably win me over. This this is it's funny like it's funny like we, like when I mentioned Morbius not being serious, this morning, it's like I don't know. I watched the movie like we're trying to be serious. Like to me, I feel like you know you say this is trying to be a serious movie, but I look at the characters and I'm like. You know, Jewel, you know, Val is not a not a serious yeah. character. Johnny Walker. Red yep. Guardian is not a serious character. I I dare you to tell me Taskmaster and Ghost are serious characters. 
And I mean, so they're like Bucky, serious. They're just not. John not Walker interesting. really a serious character? Yeah. Is John Walker, like, I don't think he's a serious. Like, I feel like the only serious character is is Bucky. You know that I'm supposed to like as a fan take seriously, and this, that's the yeah. that's the problem. This team and Elena, you know, maybe, but like right. even her, she has a lot of a, a comedic aspect yeah. to her character as well. Yeah, this team just isn't it. It's not like, a good this, team. This, this isn't the team, especially not, especially not for some Dark Avengers, which EG, as you pointed out, is not even the story. But it's just like this team just is not. This isn't the team that people are gonna go out and be like, oh wow, I have to see like. There's even better villains. Quite better and, and then they they put Sentry in his joint and he looks like a clown. Yeah, I was I was really looking forward to seeing Sentry yeah, and it wasn't enough there. No there there for Sentry for me. So this that that didn't that wasn't so great. I will although echo that uh Daredevil looks looks like heat. Like Daredevil looks great. Um whatever they were gonna do before I'm glad that they've now changed course and done this because I think uh, one of you guys made a great point. I think it was Kendall who was like, uh, you know, Marvel needs Daredevil more than Daredevil ever needed Marvel Studios. And that could not be more true because the Daredevil Netflix legacy is Teflon, is yeah. ironclad, is it is certified. There's like, regardless of how this show is, we can always look back and say that was one of the All best fame. things we've ever seen in terms of superhero content. And and I, I think I think you can even make the case that Daredevil helped Netflix so much. Oh my god, yeah, the, absolutely. We like, talk about the, the the Mount Rushmore of Netflix content. I think Daredevil belongs on there. Absolutely. It's probably Daredevil, it's probably House of Cards. It's like maybe, part of the reason Netflix now is, like, love is not like the top stream. Right, like maybe Love is Blind up there, but I think you absolutely make a case like Daredevil will help keep make Netflix the top dog at that time. Um, that was one of their, you know, first big like you know along with like House Card, one of their first big original joints. Yep, they weren't really producing that many original series. Now they have a million. Yeah, yeah, no, Daredevil was placing Netflix lore's special. So like, yeah, like this was a situation where. They would never need Marvel Studios, but Marvel Studios needed Daredevil, which is why it was so foolish to me that they were going to mm-hmm. decide that Karen Page is not important, Foggy Nelson is not important. We could just cast whoever the hell we want to be Val, uh, uh, to be um, to be Val. We could just we could pick, you know, we could just we could do whatever we wanted. Like we don't have to bring back Burnthal or bring back these other people. Like it was so silly, and now you see what they've done with this. And you see how good this looks. Along with adding new things, adding different wrinkles. Like showing us White Tiger. And it's like, oh, cool. Yeah. I want, like, we haven't seen White Tiger. Like, that's a great addition. Like uh, adding Muse to the trailer. Like now they're putting their spin on it, but still respecting the old and respecting what was Muse the is a character that was created not that long 2016. ago. 2016. I want to say it might have been in 2016. Like the show was like, coming out when Muse yeah. when was created. So, like, now this is something that, you know, it's like we talked about X-Men 97, but this is to an extreme, where it's like the show's not even that old, but there's a brand new character they're saying was dope enough to just throw right into this And my thing is into great. This like, this is, Daredevil is not Superman. Daredevil is not Batman. Right. Daredevil right. is not Spider-Man. No. Daredevil does not have this rose gallery of characters where, like, you need to just own, like, there's, there's probably... 40 villains from the 70s and 80s and 90s that they have not done yet that they don't ever have to do. <laughs> like, they don't, it's not like, oh, man, you didn't do the Riddler yet. Like, you know, Batman, that'd be a problem. So, all right, how many movies are you going to do without doing How many movies are you going to do without doing, you know, Joker? Like, there's only so many. Like, it doesn't matter that, like, uh, someone, a newer Batman villain is a really cool villain. Like, you just can't just throw somebody in the mix when there's so many characters people want to see. But Daredevil, he's just not as popular. Nowhere near as close. So you need to just put the coolest people, the best people there. So and then we and you ran the gamut of all the people you need. You done Electra, you done Kingpin, you done Bullseye. The hand. Sorry, what was that? And the hand. And the, the hand, hand and the hand. Though like those are the only villains anybody cares about with Daredevil. It's in a serious manner. In terms of like the 
very casual like superhero fan or, or Daredevil fan. There's the super fans that know all the villains, of course, and there's so many. But like, yeah, like this is now this is your opportunity. He's the perfect character to say, hey, let's respect the what we, what they did by keeping those like iconic characters around. That's what didn't make sense to me. It was like these are the characters that are important to Daredevil, <laughs> Foggy Nelson and and and, and King, Kingpin and like like in Bullseye. Like yeah, those are people. <laughs> those are people that you should keep. Like th- that make that helps you moving forward. That helps your canon. But then when you want to add the newer characters, that's where you can put your imprint in. So I'm I'm glad they they changed course because uh, I agree. I think this trailer uh, looked awesome. Um, I'm I'm excited to see Muse. I'm excited to see White Tiger. Uh, I, I will say because you mentioned like you know like I said there's not there's almost no nothing you need to know from the previous iteration on She Hulk to watch this trailer or anything. The only thing is like we see like Daredevil has a lot of costumes now, and like one of them is the red costume, yellow costume, which is of course what he wore in um. She Hulk. I actually think it was kind of. I kind of like that. Looking at uh, this is gonna be. What were you gonna say? Oh, you're gonna... No, I was gonna say I kind of liked that because I think, and I read something from Charlie today where like he mentioned how like so much of the show is them like they use like actual artifacts or, or artifacts, Jesus, <laughs> actual like set pieces and set stuff from like the original show, like you know pictures from the set that are like that they're going through a box. And there's a picture from the old show that they, that's in the box, like. Like they use stuff from the old show to like as like a background for this show, and I thought that that was a clever way because people were like, "Why is he wearing a yellow suit?" Well, here he's wearing mostly mostly a red suit in the trailer, but like you see all the cows, and you're like, "Oh, well, like he clearly wears multiple suits now," which makes sense. Yeah, he's I, an I, advanced daredevil now. This is not Matt from season one. Um, right. It reminds me. This is an inside uh, baseball joke, but. It's like uh, you know we play the it's like we play the new college football game that you know after ten fifteen years and you're like there's all these uniforms on this game now that just weren't on the game before it's like, <laughs> the new Daredevil now it's like I don't even know which Daredevil to pick like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can pick the black black suit Daredevil red suit Daredevil yellow suit white suit I hope like, we get crazy. to see the the same guy that made him his first suit in the in the original show. That's oh yeah, that guy. That guy I, name, I love that guy. Yeah, he was. Uh, there was a sweetheart. there was a bit in in, in She Hulk about the guy making Daredevil suit. The oh. different guy. So we'll, we'll see. Oh, if, that's true. We'll see how much of that. Uh, Damn, you're right about that. Back. I didn't think about that. I don't have to bring that guy. They'll probably bring the guy from She Hulk. Yeah, you're right uh, about that. Melvin. But, Melvin um, was the name, I believe, right? Yeah, Melvin. Yes. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Melvin. So good. Yeah. So I. The, um, I love. I love what I saw from Daredevil. Uh. I like I I like the I like the Ironheart. I thought that the CGI looked. I mean, it suits a lot better. I think. I tell you what, like it's so hard I'm watching in a stupid, you know, someone else's cell phone, or whatever. But yeah, the, the I mean, CGI looked pretty good from what I saw. Um, what I think is a is super important for a, a character like that. And if you're doing a TV show, we're always gonna wonder, like, you know, are you gonna skimp on the CGI? Like, what's your budget? But it looked almost like it looked movie legit to me. So um, that looked good. I kind of, you know, I know I saw a little bit of Ryan Coogler talking about um, the show just a little bit on the video Marvel had put out uh, last week. And um, it's about, you know, of course, Riri Williams at MIT. But it seems almost like she's in like a, in the middle of a fall from grace. Like she didn't get the costume from. Uh, from from uh, Wakanda forever, she's gonna start from scratch, but she doesn't have the money to build the kind of costume she had. And that gets her hooked up with the the hood. Uh, Anthony Ramos, uh, he looks really good in this show. Um, mm-hmm. So I was I was actually pretty impressed with what I saw from uh, Ironheart. I'm trying to think of what else uh, what else I I, I saw. Anything, anything, I anything was... else uh, from you guys? Uh, what kind of what you got? So my my biggest low light from D23, besides more Disney's and Marvel's uh, uh, decide, desire to keep these things behind closed doors in a, in a hockey NBA size arena, as if like you're going to be able to have security, uh, you know, take people's phones away inside a inside a in, what is, in an arena that seats eighteen thousand people. Um, that just didn't make any sense. Like I get it at, at Comic Con, you're you're in Hall H. It's a little easier to crack down, 
So like, you know, it makes sense to not do this is like you was like you wanted these things to just leak and be watched by people on leak. So I'll you know, I'll, I'll say this, format. Kendall. I like before you continue. They can do that. They can take away phones because I mean I went to a Chris Rock concert at, at Barclays and they have and I went to uh I went to see Silk Sonic in Las Vegas and there are these That's um, true. things where they you know you walk right into the before anybody walks in, they give you these pouches. Uh, to put your phone in, and everyone has to put their phone in the same pouch. Uh, it's That's happening true. more and now more that, that, now in venues. Now I don't know if the nature of D twenty three would have made it hard to do that because like, people I'm have to use their phone for other things. Well, for media, yeah, I mean, you let you them lot in their laptops. I mean, laptops. I mean, I guess you can record right. on a laptop, but uh, but it seemed like the most of the people were recording on cell phones that we saw. At least the videos we right. saw. So I, I wonder if they yeah. did want this stuff leaked, which then makes this whole right. practice ridiculous. Because like, well, you wanted to leak. Yes. Why don't you just post it the day after on YouTube? I don't, I don't understand what the point of anything. Yeah. And once they do leak, like even if you didn't want them leak, like once they do leak, at that point you have to just drop. Like now you're just you're fighting a fight and they that's haven't. not even there anymore. And then they, cause now you just you're getting the narratives getting put out. Now luckily the Daredevil thing was good and. You know, so it's gotten good reception, so they don't have to worry about that. But if, if people came out and were like, I don't know, it looks kind of mid, you know, it's like, well, yeah, you're watching it on on you know in 480p, yeah. like you're yeah. not watching in a clear version of it. But to me, I, the, my two biggest low lights, I think one, not a fan of the Johnny Storm Human Torch costume that they dropped. Mm. Uh, you know, we had the picture of Joseph Quinn sitting at a table in a uh, in his costume and. I mean, look, it's 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 Fantastic Four costume. I'm not gonna sit here and be like it's not. It looks nothing like the comics, but just way too much white. Looks very. It looks kind of campy. Now again, it's pre CGI. Hair looks kind of funny as well. I, it, like I don't know. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go too yeah, in on I'm, it. But I'm in the minority of. I I thought it looked good. I mean, I, really? I, I didn't think it was that. Yeah. 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 No, I liked it. It it it, it fits the retro perfectly. It fits the it fits the, the the aesthetic. I'm just getting a little worried about the aesthetic. Now look, Matt Shackman did such a good job with Wandavision, but it's just like man, like we were asking for the Fantastic Four for so long, like just a good regular version of Fantastic Four, and now we're getting the Jets, and I'm like, I mean, this could be good, and they're trying to do something different, but I'm like, we haven't seen a good regular version of Fantastic Four yet, and we got to get this version, like. I don't well, know. the good news I mean, is, I mean, he is the Human Torch, so most of the time he'll be on fire. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, the suit's not that so important suit, for him. He might be, I mean, ironically, there's two people where the suits don't mean much. The thing only wears underwear, yeah. and he's on yeah, fire. And, and, so, really, he's on fire. Storm's going to be invisible after that. Yeah, Storm's going to be invisible. So, like, so like really, <laughs> he needs to make sure he reads suits, okay? But in all seriousness, um, yeah, I mean, it definitely, I mean, it's very 1960s the suit like it's, it's very 1960s yeah. it'd be great if you told me like yeah this was like in, like instead of the 60s batman like this was like a 60s uh fantastic four show like that came out back in the day I'd be like, yeah it's kind of cool yeah just, your frustration though is that show. like this is i i just don't think you you wanted this i don't think you wanted a 1960s they're leaning fantastic very hard four. Into now i know you can't i know you can't make it like he's got some like you know armor you know some you know Two twenty twenty tens MCU armor yeah, or even on like the John Krasinski like, fire, uh, Fantastic Four suit. Yeah, like I, yeah, like even that may have looked a little too high tech or a little too modern. But like, I just would have you know a darker you know even if the the color is not that important. But just I just I don't know. There's too much white. There's a lot of white on there's the a shoulders. Lot of white in this, in this costume. It, I'm like, man, it just looks <laughs> a little funny to me. But um, that one and then kind of staying in the same lane, I. I'm not sure about this Spider-Man show, man. I know I texted you guys being like, ah, this, this trailer is not really doing it for me. It doesn't look te- it, like it doesn't look terrible. I wouldn't have done the the, the art style or the the CGI 3D aspect of it. I think it's a little weird. I wouldn't have done the show. How about that? Yeah, and but that's like I think the bigger crux of it is. I think everybody, if we could start over, particularly after X Men '97, we'd all we're much rather see Spider-Man '98. Yeah. <laughs> Spectacular Spider-Man yeah. season three, yeah. like th- that's let's just start there, and that's really should be the end of the conversation. But 
creating another new Spider-Man show after we just had one a couple years ago that nobody watched because it was another new Spider-Man show after Ultimate Spider-Man, which was fine, but like, you know, also didn't reinvent the wheel after Spectacular Spider-Man. It was a downgrade from that. You know, you know what we need, guys? It's just been going down. You know what we need? How crazy I say this because we spent years being like, you want to see Spider-Man in high school? You want to see Spider-Man in high school? We need a new Spider-Man that's an adult. Enough with the Spider-Man in high school. Like, and I think that's part of the reason why you're not excited about this, Kendall. Like, Spider-Man is in high school in the comics for about, like, three years. Like, three years of real time or whatever. Two years. It's like a very short time that he's in high school in the actual comics. But, like, because that's how he began, there is a romanticism around it that, oh, if you start a Spider-Man content, you gotta start him in high school. When the majority of us have been reading and watching Spider-Man content of him as an adult. Always. Very few of us were alive in the 60s, 70s reading Spider-Man as a high school kid. Because it wasn't that long. It didn't take that. It didn't last that long. So, I, I think that, I honestly think that's a big part of this, guys, is I think no, I think you're right. I think it's it's like if you were going to do another Spider-Man show, I'm like, oh my god, we're doing the spider fight again? Oh my god, we're doing Uncle Ben getting shot again? Like, uh, I'm like, how many more times do we got to do that? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm at, and I'm like, look, I think that, uh, you know, um, they got a, what, I think Colson Domingo is going to be uh, uh, Norman Osborn. Norman Osborn. Which is, is, is very interesting, and I think it's going to be really cool. There's aspects of the show that are cool, it's just Again, if you're gonna if you're gonna do high school, then just bring me Spectacular Spider Man again. Just continue that show from where it was and get him to college, or just do something where he's an adult. Like I just think that the, uh, the whole we're gonna have to be introduced Spider-Man? to these he- villains again. Sorry, what did you say, Smart? Was the Ultimate Spider Man in high school? I forget. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. he was. Yeah, oh, wow. I mean we're on <laughs> we're on a ridiculous yeah. streak right now of high school Spider Man. I watched. I actually watched, I tried twice to try to watch that newer show that was on Disney XD. And I keep, like, stopping at the same point. It's not that, it, it's actually not bad, but it's just, it only It's a waste of time. It's just, yeah, I'm like, alright, we're, we're kind of rehashing the same thing. They're doing their own twists on things. And some of the twists are really cool and interesting, but it's like at a certain point, like, it's not even you're not even reinventing the wheel anymore. Because everyone is, is still doing the same thing. If they, they tell me, oh, we're doing a Spider-Man show, but he's 25 or 26, I'd be like, yo, that's awesome. Like, sign me up. Like, Or even 20. Like, just put him in college. Like, that's the bare minimum. Like, but, the, like, because also I think that what that does is, and it's another problem that we have sometimes, and we'll see how this show does, but, like, sometimes it, you make him in high school and it, it plays to a Disney audience. You know, it plays to, uh, you know... A younger crowd where you're able to, you know, you're able to sell that and you're able to sell a lot of toys and things of that. But if they're not trying to make a show that's like Invincible, they're not trying to make a show that's like, you know, you mentioned, we've mentioned, you know, shows like Young Justice and stuff like that. If they're not trying to make that kind of a show, then yeah, you're going to put them in high school and kind of dumb it down a little bit. But you make them a little bit older and now all of a sudden the show becomes a little bit more serious. Now it doesn't mean like it's got to be rated R if he's in college or older, but. Um, but it gives you a little bit more. It's got to be a little bit mature. It got to be a little bit smarter be- because of that. Um, I just think like there's this, and it, that makes total sense. I just think that there's this idea that, and look, there was a time where we did we did want to see him in high school because like the Raimi movies like just sped through high school. The ninety show and in the ninety show he's in college. Like it was like hey like let's see him like make meet these other people that like shaped his life while he was in high school. Like we wanted to see that and we saw it and we saw it again and again and again and all different versions. One where he had he's friends with White Tiger and Nova, another show where um, you know, we really kinda got a, a real like wide swap of like what Midtown High is like for him in Spectacular Spider Man. We saw what would be like if he met Miles Morales in high school. We see that with the old new Spider Man show. Like they've done literally everything. So see another show where it's like, okay, we're going to do this uh, the, the thing again, but we're going to be very inspired by the MCU, but except Norman Osborn is going to be, uh, he's going to be the Tony Stark to what, you know, Tony Stark was them in the movies. And like, 
okay, uh, he's in high school again. I, I, didn't, I think that's a big part of it. And uh, I agree. I think that if we were doing this all over, I think we all would be like, hey, man, just do Spider-Man 98. Like, we all love X-Men 97. That was awesome. Like, we see that character is still around. Like, we, we want to see that. Just bring that in. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if, if that's still going to happen or if that's a possibility. But, yeah, I think that that's clearly uh, the misstep with that show. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I would, I would tend to agree. I think putting him in college would, would definitely make it more. Um, it would definitely make it more appealing, probably a little more mature. That's probably part of the lack of appeal for me. Is I don't know if I'd say it seems a little kiddish, or, or just a little more immature. But I think that's probably part of the reason I'm not really watching these shows because he's a, he's a kid. You know, and, and like you said, it's inspired by it and Uncle Ben and oh, Mr. Stark and can I be an Avenger and, and all that it. kind got of stuff. Got this internship, like, you know. Oh, I got an internship and oh, I got the, you know, it's like, it's like you get just get tired, of, you kind of get tired of that. It's like, I want Spider Man to just be Spider Man. Right. I want to be Spider Man, you know, like as an adult and him navigating um, his relationship with MJ and, or and, Gwen or, or whatever and, and kind of, kind of, having his rose gallery and fighting that rose gallery. Yeah, that's kind of what I would want to see. And in, in a show like Invincible is so good. And we've seen now my adventures with Superman has decided like, you know, we're going to kind of just make it an, an invincible kind of rip off, but it works because, you know, it's, again, it's a good model to, to, to go off of. And it's not, none of the night. I mean, invincible is definitely dark, but like it's, but like it's, you know, like my version of Superman has decided, like, yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of the maturity of Invincible, but like, we're not gonna have any of the gore, you know, <laughs> like because we want to be able to put it on Cartoon Network or at least Adult Swim, and like, it, 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 it it's a show that you can show anybody, you know, and it works, and it, and an adult can watch it and enjoy it. Uh, Young Justice is like that as well. It has been since day one. I mean, we'll see how this show goes. I mean, it doesn't look like it's gonna be. It doesn't look like it's gonna be. Really dumb but i don't know i'm just I'm, I'm, i have i have reservations and uh, to me i think the biggest i mean remember remember when we saw that show when it was first announced years ago i think during disney plus day we were like i mean i thought we i think we were doing a live stream and i was like oh like we're getting a a show about tom holland that's how it was pitched and his freshman year that's what it was pitched it was like spider-man freshman year like they didn't really get into it but like that's what we all assume. It was like this is good, and this is gonna be awesome because like they can't obviously do a million Spider-Man movies, and but like they have the rights to his show, so like to the show, so they can just do a show based on Tom Holland, just like they did, just like they had him in What If, um, and that would have made sense because we missed a lot of what happened, like his origin. They skipped a lot of yeah. it, so making a show based off of it would have been cool. Making it some like alternate universe, I mean, all of our first reaction was like, well, well no one asked. Pass. Like yeah. I'm not saying. Like, like, if there's any hero that you would have told me, like, who should we make a cartoon off of? I would have said not Spider. -Man. <laughs> and that's that's controversial because, like, yeah, he's got a great Rose Gallery. He's got a great. He's got a pretty good history with cartoons. Like, why not make another Spider Man show? It's like because we have a million. Of them. Yeah. And it's like if you're gonna make one, you might as well just bring one of the good ones back. They didn't last that long, you know. And so I think they have made a mistake there. Uh, I think you know, look, they made an X Men show. That wouldn't work. That would have made an original one, but the X-Men 97 has been incredible. They should have, they probably could have done, you know, Fantastic Four or uh, any other character that's been neglected, but... This show um, also just took forever to make. Like, that was the other thing. I mean, we've been hearing about this show, which was, first was freshman year, and now it's a friendly neighborhood. Like, we've been hearing about this show, I feel like, since, since like, 2020 it's 2019 it feels like forever it's been at least like three years yeah, yeah like it's been forever and it's like we still won't we won't was this i guess it comes out next year i believe or is it or later this year? i don't remember uh, uh this year all right so later this year so we finally get this show but i'm like we've been hearing about this show for way too long and again the trailer we saw it was okay you know it was, it was fine um but again I, okay i watched spider bite again okay like, i'm just I don't know. I, I I don't think that this. I don't know who was asking for this. Like I think, again, when it was pitched, it was with the show that was pitched to the to us, to the the, the fans was it was going to be Tom Holland's first year as Spider-Man. I was like, that sounds awesome. 
Like, I really, like, are there other villains we don't, like, he's already faced, we don't even know? Like, I, I was so excited about that idea. And then they said this, I'm like, no, we don't, we don't want this. <laughs> like, this is unnecessary. And, you know, here we are with this. Because then there, cause then we start hearing, oh, Daredevil's going to be, I was like, how the hell is Daredevil going to be in, Sp- <laughs> in a Tom Holland Spider-Man show? Well, I was like, how... I was like, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe some how he interacts with him. Who knows? And then they see he's a black suit. I'm like, why is he wearing black? It, none of it made any sense. It was so. I mean, once they had Norman Osborn, but then yeah, he, and, and then he was, a, he was a brother. I was, and like, I was like, wait, Norman Osborn's yeah. a brother. Number one, number two, Norman Osborn's around. He don't never talk about him. But and then they showed him meeting, you know, and and it was like the Tony Stark thing, and it was like, oh yeah, yeah this is an awesome you know, universe. we're doing that's there. crazy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, I think and also universe based on the MCU, like that's just stupid. I don't, I don't know. Like, what are we doing here? There must be like a, there must be a contractual thing, but like, just make it like, just make it almost exactly like the MCU. Like, don't like have Iron Man in it. Like, say it's an alternate universe if you want, but like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it either, guys. I think that um, again, I think this was definitely a mistake, <laughs> but maybe it could be great. It could be great. We don't. We don't. We don't know. Um, I but but I was I was not all that impressed. We do uh, for X Men ninety seven aspect. We begin where we end. Uh, new suits apparently coming for season two, and we're looking at probably yes. Grant Morrison inspired suits. Which I'll be honest, I'm not all that thrilled about. <laughs> um, the, I know the Grant, I, I, I Grant Morrison that. run is awesome, but. The suits are kind of they're, they're it was they were made inspired by the movies, so it's a lot more bland, a lot more uh, you know everybody kind of looking the same. I that was the only thing about the X Men ninety seven stuff that I was a little like oh okay. I was very excited for new suits, and we you know we saw some different suits. Obviously, they all wore throwback suits in the last episode, which was killer, and then hear oh new suits i was like oh awesome and then i hear oh it's gonna be grant morrison style new x-men suits i'm like wait what no i don't want those great books but not greatest suits i thought that the uh i thought it was cool that they were giving us polaris yes I mean, they sort of teased that she was going to be in it last season the um i thought it was funny how they were trying to like uh, or at least there were articles that were like yeah an apocalypse is going to be in season two i was like duh oh uh, uh, yeah I mean, we know <laughs> yeah like he was literally like both post credit scenes were apocalypse um so yeah no i am uh i'm excited for season two man i mean you know we'll see how you know how much of the vision was changed from what bodomeo had laid out and i'm assuming like yeah they're marvel smart like the writers brad winterbaum's pretty done a pretty good job with the television stuff like i think they know the stuff that works and the stuff that didn't with the show and most of it worked. I will be interested to see some of the some of the decisions that were maybe a little bit more controversial if they dial back. You know, like you know, obviously, like the the Magneto Rogue thing, for example, that was controversial. Some people didn't like it. Some people liked it. You know, it was compelling television. I'll give you, I'll give them that. But some people thought it was, I don't know, it was just you know a little weird. But we'll see if that sticks in a in a show where Bo is not writing it anymore. Mm. You know, we'll see if Disney then jumps in and says, like, yeah, it doesn't need to be here. Uh, and they just kind of write it off the show, or they may lean into it. I don't know. Kevin, you know, Kevin is talking on... about how he, he saw, he enjoyed that people embraced the soap opera nature of the show. Right. So, I think it's up right. to him they would keep it. Right. And, and there's, you know, and there's aspects, there's plenty of aspects of that, you know, uh, we'll see. And, and so that, again, that, that I'll be interested to see. But otherwise, I honestly, I think that that's the biggest thing that's those are the biggest things that are going to be up in the air. You know, I think from a story standpoint, from, a, you know, where is the plot going? I assume the plot's going to basically stay the same. I think some of the the relationship stuff may get uh, may get adjusted, but that that'll just again, all that's like at a higher level than, you know, some of the people writing it at that point. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm actually I'm, I am excited about uh, Lorna being in the se- being in the season. Yeah, yeah, I mean that'll be exciting. I I'm curious to see, uh, like you mentioned, Kendall, how the how the story changes. Uh, apparently, you know, aren't they bringing in the guy that was right that was did uh, what if 
um, the writer. Or, I, or believe, I, think so. yeah, I believe so. Or a guy, I think he wrote some stuff, some what if stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it will be interesting to see to see to see how things change. Um, again, hopefully, uh-huh. and he he's writing season three. So again, season okay. two should stay mostly the same. They'll have rewrites. No, I saw Jeff have said that there's some rewrites happening though. Yeah, 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 yeah. they'll have rewrites. Uh, and, and obviously, Bodeveo has no yeah, impact on that, which is why. Good. No it's going to be harder for him to take, you know, full credit for, you know, what happens on this, uh, on the season. But I'm sure as, I mean, we'll see how much he tweets going forward, but, but I'm sure as the show will go on, like he'll have, he'll have probably a pretty deep understanding of what's happening, you know, because he, he outlined the whole thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, hopefully um, the, hopefully the vibe stays the same. That's kind of my thing. It's just, I think the pace of the story worked. Uh, I, I think they, they may, Hopefully they don't split up sto- the story the same way they did with the with the kind of storm thing. Uh, yeah. I mean it's okay to have like A plots and B plots, but I think the way they told it and then just forgot about it and then just finished the story. I think you're gonna see more of that, to be honest, because you got remember the yeah. X Men. You know, spoilers for those who have not watched. Just need a spoiler warning here. You have X Men that are across time. You know, so I, I'm sure there can be episodes right. where like. We just go away to see what, like, uh, you know, Gene and Scott are doing raising young Cable with Rachel Summers or going to the distant past where Charles and, 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 and Eric are dealing with, you know, a young apocalypse. Like, I, th- I think they're going to be, I think, I think we'll probably get a couple of those kind of episodes. And then other miscellaneous episodes where maybe there's a random, uh, you know, Polaris story that's getting told that gets told later or whatever. Like, who knows? And I, I mean, honestly, that'd be fine. I, th- I I feel like it's just I think it's just because the storm plot was just such. I think it's, maybe it's just because storm was like so awesome in the show, and then to kind of remove her, and then it's like, oh, is she gonna get her powers back? How's she gonna get her powers back? And it's like, well, that. You know, I, and I, I said this as the show was. Cool. Yeah, I, and I said this as the show was going on. I think that that was one of the things that. I didn't love about it, but it, it's it's a natural thing with X Men that you can't really avoid. That there's so many characters yep. that they had to go into this thing where like they'd have full episodes where two or three of them were off doing something, and so they just weren't in it. Storm obviously had her storyline going on separately, so there were a lot of episodes where she just wasn't she wasn't in it, and they gave her they gave a reason why. And there were episodes where Wolverine just randomly wasn't around, and episodes where Beast just wasn't around and that's that's uh again that's hard to avoid when you have ten plus characters that are you know supposed to all have top billing. Um, you know, it's an yeah, interesting they did that uh, without Charles. problem to have. I remember they had two episodes with Charles yeah. in space. Yeah, and, yeah and Xavier was yeah. part of that as yeah. well, yeah. As, as a guy that was out off the off the grid, you know, and that was convenient for them until they brought him back and then they had to some other people had to lose some playing time. Yeah. You know? That is the nature of the X Men, but You'll have uh, Matt, Matthew Chauncey, who's been doing, he's going to be doing this in season three of uh, of uh, yeah. X-Men 97. He did uh, work on uh, What If. Um, he's working with... They did talk about What If. Uh, no, I was just going to say, he's working alongside uh, Jake Cast- uh, Castorina, um, who's already, uh, who's working on season two now. I, um, they did talk about What If. I haven't even watched uh, season uh, oh, I two. I haven't finished I didn't season, two. Watch the season two. I, I know they said that the watch, uh, the watchers, end is near here. I think, or at least this. Yeah, I think this is the final season. Yeah. Um, is what they said, and they, they are they are bringing in. I think Ironheart's going to be a part of it, and Shang Chi's going to be like they're bringing in a lot of the characters that you know were introduced more recently. Uh, she Hulk, uh, Moon Knight, I think, supposed to be a part of it. So. It was weird. Like they didn't. None of them were in season two, and it was like, what's like, what's the point of this? If we're not gonna, if you're doing this right. show, and you don't have ha- all the characters we just saw. Some of them had been out for like a year. They just weren't exactly. in season two, and so I was like, I don't need to watch more what ifs on Happy Hogan and you know, <laughs> and, and and Brody. Like I've seen all these characters a million times already. Like, and that's really the biggest problem with what if. I was, I was funny. I was talking to our brother Henry about this just yesterday. Uh, we were talking about the idea of a Star Wars what if and how that would make a ton of sense. And there's a lot of great stories you can tell there. But the problem with Marvel is like they don't tell the most interesting what if that they can make. Like there's a YouTube video out there. I forget who made it. 
But the guy had, like, this was before season two came out. He was, like, top 50 what-if ideas. And they were all awesome. And none of them have ever been, like, none of them were done. Like, like the, the, the easy one is what if, like, what if Spider-Man was on Team Cap instead of Team Iron Man in, in Civil War? Easy. Just just write the check. There's a lot of money going on. A lot of people watching that. But they don't want to do it. I don't know why. I really don't know. It's not even like they're saving it for a movie because that movie's never right, been made. Of course. You know, unless they're unless they're trying to re, unless they're going to reboot the thing and do another Civil War movie and do it that way. But just like just put that in a cartoon. Like this, that's why we have what if. But instead, they want to do. You know, what if Gamora was you know a part of the Avengers? <laughs> it's like yeah, no, they, one, yeah. no one asked for that. Yeah, stuff like that. It's like what? I will, I feel like I've always been a little skeptical of the what if idea. And maybe there's audio if it's just I wasn't man I'm lying. I, I feel like I always have been. I feel like I've always been a little skeptical of it. I was hopeful, but I don't think this is working. I think you hit the nail on the head. And I just don't think that. I feel like that first season gave us more interesting ideas of the stuff that we that we expected. Want to see and we expected some of it. I feel like the reason why I didn't watch season two because I feel like the episodes that they said they were going to do, I was just like, I'm, I don't. I'm not really interested in these and I'm hoping season three will be different, but I don't know. I think as a, as a concept, this hasn't worked the way I think they wanted, which is, uh, which is unfortunate, obviously. And it was interesting. Cause like when they pitched this again, it was going to be, Oh, well like, you know, Scarlett Johansson and, and Robert Downey, all these people are going to be involved. I feel like even they even hit the hell up their end of the bargain on that. I feel like regularly we have like, <laughs> different voice actors random voice actors yeah, yeah so it just that's a concept i don't think this quite work much like there, there was like most of the multiverse era to be honest season two i mean there's moments in season two and in season one but particularly in season two where i'm just like i don't even know who this guy is like i've got yeah. to look it up there was yeah like there was like, one episode there was one of the guys that was a part of the russian guy that was a part of ant-man you know that was with ti like one of the yeah one of the themes yeah, yeah, from I mean, Ant-Man. I exactly what he was in an episode and I'm like, I, it took me like days to figure out who that guy was. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> I had to look it up. I was like, oh, this is the guy from Ant Man. Like, how was I supposed to know that? <laughs> the way they drew him, like he's a generic guy. The voice actor was different. I'm like, and I don't remember that character anyway. So I'm like, this whole thing is just messed up when they're, when they're trying to bring that back as a call. Sometimes I feel like I mean, Kevin they, Feige just be they be doing stuff just just to entertain Kevin Feige. Yeah, like for themselves. Right, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they used to be, I mean, they be like the rumor that like. It was tough to write, like in wrestling, they say it was tough to write, you know, episodes of Raw and SmackDown because you were writing for an audience of one, and it was Vince McMahon, and like you were writing a show for him, not really for the fans. That became difficult right. when the fans got upset about what was being aired. And it's funny because you hear Triple H now, like when he talks about, you know, his his thought process in writing, he always says, like, I think about, you know, you know, I put myself in the twelve year old kid. Yeah, what what I what would I, I, right. I like? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what would I want? And it's like it's funny that you say that. He must he must know that same yeah. issue. And sometimes with Marvel, I feel like whether it be what we talked about earlier with like what they were gonna what they were gonna do with Daredevil and how they changed up, um, or this. Like I just feel like there are times where uh Kevin's obviously an all time great creator, but like sometimes I just like man, I feel like they do stuff and it's like yeah, they're doing story people like random Ant Man characters like that no one cares about. I'm like what who are you making this for other than yourself? I feel like you're the only people who rem- the only person who will remember these people, you know? Uh, I mean, there's so many other stories we want to do that we don't get a chance to. So I don't know. Um, but we've, we've gone real long here, uh, guys. But uh, it's been a fun ride. It's been a fun show. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, listening to this edition of New Generation Hero Talk. Of course, you can catch all of our shows on New Generation Podcast Network. You can find that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, we'll also be sure to check us out on YouTube, New Generation Media, as we will find our channel. Make sure you subscribe and give us a like on the videos and comments, uh, and comment as well. Uh, make sure you follow social media. You are on Twitter, New Generation Pod, Instagram, New Generation Podcast. Uh, you can follow Shamari on Snapchat and Instagram, MCShan22. Kendall on Twitter, New Gen Ken. You can follow me on Twitter, EJ underscore Stewart, and on Instagram, uh, and TikTok action EJ. That'll do it for now. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. Shamari, for Kendall, I'm EJ. Take it easy, guys. Peace.